All right. Hopefully you guys can hear me. Let me know if you guys are able to hear me in chat. Hopefully. We are live in the full cockpit simulator. It's been a minute since we've been in here. What's going on? Statui. Welcome aboard. Heavy Keith, Keith B. Welcome. Good to see you guys. Um, thanks for joining us this morning on our test stream, test flight, as we prepare to get ready for world flight. And we continue to test all of our equipment. So yeah, let me guys know in chat if you can hear me. Hopefully you guys can hear me. And the audio is coming through all right. Like I said, this is a test. So hopefully things are correct. I never ended my Streamlabs bet from football, looks like. <laughs> but that's all right. Um, so we're loaded up in Melbourne. And we're going to be going down to Hobart. Hobart, I guess. We're going to try to fly on VATSIM. I don't know if VATSIM model matching is all set up yet. Um, but we're going to try and get hooked up to VATSIM here this morning. Can hear me five by five. That's what I like to hear. That is what I like to hear. So let's get some uh, power to the aircraft here. So this has been sitting for a few hours as I took a nap. Been working uh, pretty much all day yesterday and all through the night till about, uh, I don't know, four in the morning or so. <laughs> uh, or yeah, I got here at like, what was it, 11 yesterday. Worked all the way through the night till about four in the morning. Took about a little nap and now I am back and ready to continue working and getting this thing ready to go arcade jackpot master is here welcome sir so yeah hopefully it all works if not i might have to just restart the simulator but we are here so let's see what happens so we'll get ground power on align the irs's let our window heats on trim air all our research fans are coming on hydraulics are coming on those lights are coming on. There we go. Everything else looks good. Smoking signs can come on as well. Not sure why that doesn't have sound at the moment. One Charlie Mike is here. What's going on, man? Welcome aboard. So I'm just going to make sure things are looking good so we can get out of here. It's, uh, I think it's about a 55 minute flight down to uh, Hobart from Melbourne. So not too bad of a flight. Uh, let's see. When my sim sounds on, it looks like they are. Is voice meter on? The voice meter is not on, which is why we don't have the sounds. So let me get that on here. Okay. Yeah, that's on, I guess. Okay. Uh, we'll switch me off. Um, all right. Uh, the no fly guy, what's going on? Uh, did you book a sim mate? Uh, no, this is fly with rookie sim. This is, uh, pretty much like our sim that we uh, are using for world flight that we are getting ready to go. So yeah, this is a uh, fly with rookie sim simulator. Part of the SoCal crew team that we are a part of. So we are just like I said, doing some testing here this morning to see if we can get everything working. Or as we continue to get things working, I should say, um, for World Flight coming up in less than two weeks now. Not uh, next weekend, but the following weekend will be World Flight um, that we are participating in. So let me see if I connect to BatSim, see if this works. Connect to the voice server. Oh, all right. I see that on there. I didn't do the overlay, that part of it anyways, but I'll have to fix that. <laughs> Again, that's why we're doing testing, right? That's why we're doing testing. So, yeah, if anything is uh, off today, just let me know so that way we know what we need to fix. All right. 
Oh, I go. Uh, let me see if I can go outside view if we can actually see any plans. Okay, it looks like bot sim model matching is working. Alright, looks like our model matching is working. We are Delta 8317. So, does the PA system work? Uh, it does. I don't have it on currently, but it does. So, but no, we do have our, uh, where we can see this, PA uh, mics on both for the captain and first officer, as well as the flight attendant in the back. Um, I don't think he, yeah, I don't think it's on currently, but we do have it. There will be lots of good announcements going on during World Flight, for sure. <laughs> lots of craziness, I know for sure, are going to be going on. All right, so we got that there. It doesn't look like there's any ATC online, but let me file my flight plan with VATSIM from my tablet here. I did not file on VATSIM yet, but we'll do that right now. Delta 8317, file, and I need to make sure that I put in here using full SIM, so that way they know that we're in a full simulator cockpit. Okay, let's file that. Okay, that looks good. My sim is cool in yours. <laughs> it may be. It may be. All right, so we got that rolling. Sorry, it takes a minute to get something set up here. We kind of woke up a little bit late than we wanted to this morning, but I wanted to get out and stream here about 9. Same time Cap was leaving Australia here to see if we can get Vats him working and hear him and all that good schnazzy stuff here. Um, where is ProSim? ProSim, 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 ProSim. There's a lot of things open on here right now <laughs> that I don't hear. Oh, wait. I have to go down. There we go. Uh, okay, so ProSim is only recognizing one. That's fine. Okay, so I think we're pretty much good to go. Let me get the rest of our aircraft good and set up here. Uh, oh, you mean right there in the flight plan? <laughs> uh, we're trying to be the ultimate cap in here. All right, so like I said, everything's still some minor bugs and issues that we're working out. For example, this one here, um, the FMC for rows on the left side but that can easily just be reset by unplugging it in the back and plugging in i unfortunately can't fit in that small space only only rookie can fit in there so that can be fixed it's just because it's been sitting and not being used for a few hours so we'll get that in we're going to request our flight plan so i'm not sure why our seatbelt signs aren't working or Seatbelt dings are not working. I don't know if you guys can hear the dings. I can't hear the dings. But, uh, yeah, I definitely did not hear the ding for the seatbelt sign. Jordan Lewis, what's going on? Avia David, what's going on? Welcome, welcome. Good to see you. Um, good to see you. Yeah, we'll, we'll have uh, more views and everything. Like I said, this is just a test. There will be wing views, and you'll be able to see, like, in front of the aircraft. Uh, down where you see the gauges. The gauges will be kind of below the main screen there. We can see the from the back of the or you can see the front of the cockpit from the back. Um, all the displays and stuff will be there, FMC and all that good stuff. Alright, so let's load our flight plan and we can activate the flight plan. Um, Alright, so that all looks good. So departure here out of Melbourne. We have Runway, what runway? 
Uh, let me see what we have here. Give me a second, guys. Okay. All right. So I just need to. That's just me contacting the text team. Did I rent it? Um, JM, no. I have not rented it. This is Fly with Rookie Sim. This is part of the SoCal Crew team um, that we are on for World Flight. So, yes. No, did not rent it. Part of our team's sim. Um. All right. So, the runway 16 for departure out of here. And we're on the. Uh, Sun T3 departure, and we can execute that. That looks good. Go to our leg page. Gonna fix the discontinuities here. That looks good. That's good. There's no sound right now. I think. Um, I mean, you can hear me though, right? So I got the tech team working on the whole sim sound issues right now. Like I said, they were working when I went to bed, but uh, for whatever reason, not at the moment. Uh, let's see here. Let me try and fix it. Uh, Because I think something might just have to be restarted here. It's the only thing. Uh, well, yeah, you just can't hear the same. Okay, yeah. Hold on. Working on that fix here. Thanks to our gracious text team that we have. Alright, so I might just have to restart the pro sim audio and stuff here. Hold on. Um, pro sim audio. If we get that off. This. Okay, so. I think that's what it is. Let's see here, just like that. There we go. There we go. Now we should get... I don't know if you guys can hear those dings or not. Alright, so... Should be able to hear the simulator once we get everything turning on. We don't have engines on now or anything, but sound is working. Now. Fire test. Alright, hold on. Fire test bell, though. Fire test bell, separate computer. That one's not working. Fire test is on a separate one. Fire test will work, though. <laughs> we'll get the fire test working. Uh, control 2. Control tab. Pro sound audio like that.
apparently that wasn't the right one. Ah. Fire test system. The other sounds are working. Yep. Okay. Uh, multiple computers that run this sim that make it a little bit tricky, that's for sure. Um, I go like this. And we're going to go. Should go like this. Remove that. And then this one here. Click that sound. There we go. Let's try it now. Okay, so audio on that one's not working, but let's see. Okay, so. There we go. There we go. Hopefully you guys heard the fire alarm that time. Let me get my display back up. Alright. Now like, oh, it's raining now. Alright. I hope you guys heard that that time. There we go. Fire alarm works. Yep, fire alarms and our squids work. Um, all of our tests should work that we have. Um, so we can run the system test here. There we go. All right, so that's all working. I just need to get my flight plan back in now. Whenever you got the guy at the sim, was it like a big Lego set? <laughs> Uh, even more complicated than a big Lego set, to be honest. <laughs> so we are in Y. Where are we at again? We're in Y. Minimums. Y M M L. Y M M L. Alright, just gotta get my. Gotta just get my flight plan back in, and we're gonna be ready to go here very shortly. Out of Melbourne. Let's get on to Unicom as well. See if we can hear some people on Batsim. Okay. Um, all right. So that's loaded in. Let's go to our departures again. So we said departing runway, what, 16, I think? Yeah, 16, Suntai. Three departure, and we'll execute that. Arrival into Hobart is going to be the Morga 1 on for runway 12. So we're going to do Isla Zulu 12 on the Morga 1 Alpha, and we'll execute that. Look for discontinuities. So as soon as you guys are able to see what we're doing on the FMC here during world flight. Um, it's not all set up right now, um, but that's good. And let's do our perf data. We're going to request our perf data. I think we're going up to, forget what we're going up to flight level wise. But there's our ding. Let us know that our perf data is loaded. We're going up to 35,000 feet. So let's put that in our pressurization panel. 35. That looks good. Galen, what's going on? Welcome aboard. Good to see you. Uh, Comment for metrics because I have no other words. Awesome setup. <laughs> Thanks, Galen. Appreciate it. Appreciate your kind words. 
Um, all right, so let's load in our perf data. Going to 35,000 feet, as we said. Fuel on board, 16.3. Need at least 16.1, so that's good. Cost index of 5, that looks good. So we will execute our performance data there, which will then load our fuel and everything into the aircraft as well. We'll go to our N1 limit page. I don't know how long our runway is here. How long is our runway? Runway 16 is nice and long. So let's do a good D rate here. Let's do 52 on the D rate. And we'll go to takeoff flaps 5. I need to get our center of gravity here real quick. That's going to be 22.3. So we go 22.3. We'll get our V speeds in 141, 143, and 147. That is set and looking good. There we go. Um, yes, that's set and that's looking good. Just need to find a better way to set you guys up here, but right here is fine, I guess, for now. Um, all right, so that's looking good. Flight plan's ready. Let's go ahead and fire up our APU. So we'll get our APU firing up. As we are pretty much just about ready to go, let's put in a squawk code here. We'll go transponding. I want to make sure we're still connected to still connected to VATSIM here. So it might get a little bit loud for a second. Going to the outside view. Okay, not so loud, but we are connected. We can see planes. I don't know if the planes are going to be the right model, but we can definitely see planes. Oops. Doesn't help when I drop my mic. I fix the screen there. There we go. Drop the mouse. Uh, uh. That's what should be working. All right, yeah, we are just about ready to go. So we need to push back here. Push back nose to the left. Open uh, charge for Melbourne. Let's see what gate we're at. I forget where I parked us, put us at last night. I think we're at gate like Delta something or other. We are. Okay, yeah, I think we're like Delta 17 or something like that, I think. From where we're at based on that. Oh, yeah, we're like Delta 17. So, let me see. I don't know if you guys will hear me on here or not. Melbourne traffic, Delta 8317, pushing back Delta 19. Okay, so, I don't know if anyone heard me on Unicom. Hopefully. Hopefully they did. I guess I should check to make sure the mic is on the right audio setting. It should be. Okay, yeah, it is. So, yeah, they should. They should hear us. How does pushback work? So, we use a program. Um, or, well, the main program that's running the sim is called ProSim. Let's get our APU buses on. APU bleed could come on. So, yeah, we're using a program called ProSim. ProSim uh, does a pushback, kind of like better pushback somewhat. Um, but it would be controlled by our dispatch station uh, during world flight, which would be outside the sim. So outside the sim, there is going to be a dispatch station that will handle like our ground crew communications, our, uh, all of our paperwork for flights um, during, uh, before, after, whatever we need. Uh, but yeah, there will be a whole dispatch station. Pilots will be doing their briefings before they go to their, their flights there and everything. So some of that will be filmed as well. Uh, most of the stuff will just be in the cockpit, but we will be doing videos from the dispatch station. 
um, that will be published. So, but that works here on our little tablet. Um, so I just go over to our ProSim tablet. Now that we're on APU power, I get the ground power off. Let's refresh the page here. Ground power can come off, so the light goes off now. Um, we'll get the rest of our fuel pumps on. We don't really have anything in the center tank, so we're not going to worry about the center tank pumps. Beacon light will come on now. We'll let them know that we're ready for pushback. Hydraulics, yellow damper is coming on, and we are ready for push and start, I believe. Everything looks good. We are transponding, and yeah. Oh, let me get this set up here. I didn't get this set up, so 147 is our takeoff speed. We're going to go straight up to 35 because there's no ATC online. Uh, that looks good there. And flight director can come on. We can arm LNAV, and now, oh, well, actually, someone want to get me my altimeter? Dude, look at what's going on. Wait, is this the real cockpit? This is a real cockpit simulator. Yes. I'm not a real Boeing plane, but a real Boeing cockpit simulator. I just need to get my altimeter set here before we push back real quick. That's going to be 1013, which is set. All right. We are... I haven't got the Qantas 964 pushing back to the end. Oh, there you go. Could you guys hear that ATC that just came through? Let me guys know how that... that uh, that is, not going to prefer the Microsoft 2020 live streams. Lion King, what's going on? Well, pretty soon Microsoft will be uh, flown out of this simulator after World Flight. Now that Microsoft has multi-monitor support. Uh, you did hear him? Cool. All right. Let's uh, push back nose to the left. Brakes are released. And away we go. Passengers paid over $69,000 for that flight. <laughs> All right, let's get our packs off here, and engine number two over to ground. All right, waiting for 25 and two. Yes, from a company called Flight Deck Solutions is where this cockpit came from. So, uh, I mean, I didn't initially do the initial build. This is Fly With Rookies sim um, that we use for our team called the SoCal Crew, which we'll be doing World Flight in less than two weeks. Not next weekend, but the weekend after. We'll be doing World Flight um, with a bunch of crew members. Um, you can check out the website, www.flywithrookie.com slash worldflight to see everyone that's on the team. So this is a test too. Like I said, there will be more views and setup too. You guys will be able to see the front of the nose. You guys will have wing views. Um, once that gets set up, just when we have our full tech team here. And we can stop the pushback there. All right. And brake is set. Let's go and fire up engine number one now. Your one's firing up, breaks RTO. Uh, I'm not renting an aviation mic. Uh, this is Fly with Rookie Sim. I am part of the SoCal crew team um, that is with partnered with Fly with Rookie, um, and we're doing events every year. Our main event is World Flight. This is our first main event coming up, not next weekend, but the weekend after. If you guys don't know what World Flight is, um, it's a week long stream 24 7 uh, for charity where it's going to be myself flying jeff fabiano rookie shadow hadley captain geo blue games um, and many more pilots are going to be flying with us all week um, around the world basically starting in sydney going all the way around the world with teams from other full cockpit teams from around the world as well flying for charity so 25 percent introduce fuel now so it's going to be uh, an absolutely fun event for a very great cause. Uh, why don't you put your phone in the middle of the window so you don't need to look down at it all the time? Uh, well, I can. I can put it right here. It's just hard to put it like that. I'm going to have the YouTube up here on the iPad here once we get going, and then I won't have to look down at it. But 
If I put it sideways, I won't be able to see the chat very well. So, I mean, I can definitely do that. I just can't see the chat as well. Or I can't see as much as the chat. All right, engine starter cut out. Waiting for the red tick to go away on the engine. And you guys should be able to see the engine display on there and the flight director display, but you will get the FMC here soon as well. All right, let me bring up my taxi chart. Melbourne traffic, Delta 8317, taxiing runway 16 via Tango Alpha, Melbourne. Melbourne traffic, Qantas 964, taxiing runway 27 via Quebec. All right, generators coming on, packs coming on, isolation valve auto, AP bleeds off, APU is off. Taxi lights coming on, everything there is coming on cabin is notified and come on brakes are released make sure my trim is set all right trim set let's get on out of here gotta love the full cockpit aviation boss good to see you welcome welcome yes nope i do love it all right, we're taxing. Let's get on out of here. I can see to my right of me. You guys can't see, but to the right of me, I can see another plane. That's departing runway 27 right now. The one that just called on the radio, I believe. And here, the model matching looks like it's a CRJ. I don't think it... It might not be a CRJ, but... Reverend Cafe Qantas, not six four, are lining up runway 27. Uh, so we're going to make a turn here. This should be Alpha. I'm going to hurry while that guy's waiting for that plane over there to take off. Melbourne traffic Delta 8317 is going to cross runway 27 real quick, if that's right. Yeah, go ahead. All right, so we're going to hurry up and get out of his way here. So the plane that just departed. So we're going to go ahead and cross and get out of his way while he's waiting for that traffic. Uh, hashtag, yeah, exclamation point giveaway. I don't think there is a giveaway. There shouldn't be any giveaway running. Uh, how much has it cost you so far? Has it cost me anything? I don't, uh, I'm not the one that purchased this sim. Like I said, this is why was rookie sim. And that's not a question I can answer. Uh, that'd be a question for him. I did forget to get our flaps set. We'll get flaps five set here as we're taxing out. So, like I said, we're not paying for the test flight. This is, uh, well, I, I mean, this is free. This is, like I said, the full cockpit for our team that we get to use. So, we pay with... Seven uh, Qantas taking off right So, yeah, we pay with our work and dedication, I guess, helping uh, keep it running and put together and all that kind of stuff. Uh, but, yes, no, there's no giveaway, I don't think, running at all. Shouldn't be any giveaway unless someone else did one for me. All right, so let's make a turn here. Boeing 737 Max giveaway. <laughs> no, but there will be lots of giveaways during World Flight. There will be giveaways and raffles during World Flight. No giveaways today, though. Melbourne traffic, Delta 317 is lining up runway 27 at Melbourne. Uh, let's get our engine start switches to continuous. Our transponders all the way on. Wing lights on. Strobes are on. 
How do I turn off landing lights for coming on? Being the cabin again, make sure they are ready for departure. So there is a landing rate monitor too that will pop up on our landing, so you guys can judge our <laughs> judge our landings on this as well. Uh, let's see. Madeline 310 comes out for the 40th anniversary. Do a flight from Toronto to Manchester. They are changing colors. It's one of the most iconic. Uh, we'll put that in my uh, Discord aviation boss. I'm not going to remember that, but I can definitely do that when it comes out for sure. Um, all right. Uh, I believe we're ready to go. Melbourne traffic, Delta 8317 is taking off runway 27, uh, Melbourne. Seats for departure. And all right, here we go. Engine's up 40%. And Toga. Oh, I thought I was on. Toga. And we're off. Gears coming up, positive rate. And V now's coming in. Bumpy departure here out of Melbourne today. Bumpy, bumpy, bumpy. Flaps coming up. We get our gear off. Auto brake is off. Taxi light. She is bumpy. I make a tutorial on how to stream. Uh, I mean, possibly we can do some tutorials. We're going to end up in the Hudson. <laughs> if we end up in the Hudson, Satui, something really went wrong because we are nowhere near the Hudson. <laughs> we are nowhere near the Hudson. Bird strikes. <laughs> Uh, hopefully no bird strikes. Hopefully no bird strikes. That's not what we want. Departing the lovely Melbourne. You're going to fly with me on the second leg, Kame? All right, cool. Uh, you guys are always more than welcome to fly along. We do fly most of our flights on Batsim, including in this we are on Batsim.
We gotta pay attention to what we're doing here. All right, and reaching transition altitude there. Standard pressure set and checked. 10,000 feet. Autopilot's going to come on. All right, now I can do here. What's the last airport? Um, what are we using? What do you mean one try, Mike? What are we using? Um, so, yes, we're going to Waipan. So we're going to be going to Yankee Mike Hotel Bravo currently. And then we're going to be flying to Waipan after Yes Camp. Well, yes, flying to Waipan after. Oh, what sim are we using? So, after World Flight, so the main sim we wanted to use was Microsoft 2020. Um, but because of some limitations to Microsoft when we were getting this all ready, uh, we did not know if we would be able to have enough time once multi-monitor support came out. Um, so right now we're using P3D, but after, after this world flight, which is in two weeks, um, the sim will now be switched over to be full-time Microsoft 2020, which will make the immersion of visuals in the cockpit obviously so much better. But yes, P3D is what we're using because it was the most stable um, for a full cockpit like this, and which is what most people use, P3D and full cockpits. Uh, but now that Microsoft, like I said, came out with multi support, we were originally the first ones on Microsoft as a full cockpit team. Um, but there was just like limitations that we just couldn't guarantee in time for World Flight, so that's why we had to make the switch. But Let me see, did I type it in wrong? Hold on. Should be that one. Let me take a look. Oh, sorry, YPAD. I wrote it wrong in the description. That's my bad. Yankee Papa Alpha Delta Cam. I was uh, I was half asleep when I uh, half asleep when I was uh, writing that this morning. You're going to fly Jetstar? Okay, cool. Yes, so, yeah, Inky Papa Alpha Delta is the actual airport we're going to. Hi, Harry, what's going on? How are we doing, man? All right, so we're approaching 18,000 feet here, which is when all of our lights will go off. As we are climbing. Climbing above the clouds now. It's kind of hard to hear the sim. Okay. I will take note of that. All right, all of our lights are going to come off. 18,000 feet. Letting the cabin let them know they can take their seatbelts off. See if I can just hear what this sounds like. Uh, I see what you're talking about. It's hard to hear. Uh, we're working on the audio. Like I said, that's why we're doing these test flights, but we will be fixed. It will definitely be fixed. So someone changed our view apparently. Someone someone is outside. I think I see Mr. Rookie at the dispatch station over here. Changing our views. Thank you, sir. Appreciate it. No. Oh, no. Yeah. 
Yeah, sneeze. Excuse me. Sorry. I dropped my glasses. Excuse me. Whew. All right, so how's everyone doing today? Hopefully you guys are all doing well on this fine Saturday morning or evening or afternoon, depending on where you're at. I guess it would be Saturday or Sunday, Saturday night or Sunday morning in Australia currently, I guess, typically. So we got 80 miles here, and we should be at our top of cruise, give or take, um, passing 24,000 feet now, which you guys should be able to see on the screen there. Uh, whenever you guys fly World Flight, are you guys going to be flying real time? Yes, it will be real time for World Flight. Yes, wherever it's at in the world where we're at is going to be what time it is. Um, so it'll be day flights, night flights, real weather, everything everything will be real time, real weather, real airline operations, uh, all of it, the whole shebang. There's actually a plane like right in front of me <laughs> that hopefully we don't hit. For the reason I'm not seeing them on my TCAS screen here, let's get weather on. Get our weather radar on, train can go on the first officer side. So I do see a plane in front of me, not very far. Um, I don't know who that is. Hopefully that's not Canada. I don't want to be overtaking him or anything like that. Um, okay, now they're popping up on my TCAS. I see him now. They are very, very close. Um, very, very close. I'm going to finish oh, Someone call me on the phone. Rina. There we go. Now uh, we got our galley cam on as well. Uh, sensational. Uh, yes, we are in Vatsim. So as you guys can see, we got different view set. That's our galley cam you can see in the background, um, which will be all cleaned up and set up for world flight. Um, I'm going to vector us here, though. So yeah, we're changing our heading. We are way too close to that plane. <laughs> So yeah, I'm just going to vector us here. We'll probably go around the plane. Uh, we don't want to get too close here. What the hell is going on right now? All right, so yeah, we're just testing our different views, changing back and forth. We got views for pushback, views for taxi, views for cruise um, that we've been working hard on. So two weeks, guys, um, less than two weeks now because it's uh, Sunday. I don't even know what day it is anymore. We've been working on it here so much. I don't know what day it is anymore.
Um, but yes, Sunday, so yeah, less than two weeks. Um, next weekend, next Saturday, guys, um, we are going to be doing a stream in a uh, different full cockpit simulator down in San Diego with a special guest that's having me in his sim and uh, on his stream. Um, that's going to be next Saturday as of right now. That's the plan. So keep an eye out for that, guys. Um, so that's going to be next Saturday. That's going to be a lot of fun. Um, uh, let's see. I just sent Rookie the new flyover I made. Hope he likes it. All right. Yeah, we'll take a look at him, man. I was going to actually reach out to you, see if you wanted to make something. Um, I don't know what colors you did or anything like that, but maybe if you could make it Delta-oriented, Delta-themed, that would be great, um, since we are Delta for World Flight. Mr. Patrick's here. Welcome, Mr. Patrick. Good to see you. Welcome, welcome. If you guys have not already, please smash down that thumbs up button if you guys are enjoying and you're excited for World Flight here in two weeks. Is it going to be a 737? Yes, we're flying a 737-800 cam is what our cockpit is. 737-800. Hey, is your personal home bit sim? Um, yes and no, Sensational. This is Fly with Rookie sim. Um, the, but it's our sim part of our crew for SoCal crew um, that does World Flight every year. This is our first time in World Flight. So, like I said, this is our test stream. So, like I said, anything that may go awry, maybe some, like, small things. Like I said, we're testing everything, so we're ready here in two weeks. Oh, for the sim next Saturday, yes, it is a 737 sim next Saturday as well, yes. But it's going to be someone else's stream, or someone else's sim, that's down in San Diego. Uh... Drax, hey, dude, this looks sick. Uh, I wish it was Airbus, though, because I'm an Airbus fan. Uh, I mean, there's talks that eventually there may be an Airbus sim in the future <laughs> on the team. In the future. Um, not any time in the relevant future, but definitely could be an A320 sim in the future. A simulator's probably more expensive than an actual plane. <laughs> not quite that expensive, no. Uh, an actual plane would be, what, $85 million for a 7.3? <laughs> It's definitely not an $85 million sim. Seven three seven NG, what's going on, man? Welcome, good to see you. Welcome, welcome. We are on our way to Hobart. I think it's how you pronounce it, Hobart. Um, we're kind of we're flying. We're, we're kind of flying. I think the route that Canada's taken. Just wanted to see if we could hear people on VATSIM. That's the other thing we're testing. I kind of just. Put our route offset right now, though, because we were really close to another plane. We caught up to one of the regional jets here, so I'm just going to be vectoring ourselves offset next to them so we don't run into them. Might even eventually have to do like a 360 to, to for separation, since I think we're all going to the same place right now. We're showing a sim like this uh, with A320. I mean, they make them. They definitely, uh, they definitely make them. They make uh, on the World Flight team. So there's like, uh, I don't know, about ten different World Flight teams for the event next week. And there is an A320 team. I don't know if they are in the event this year, but there is a team that does have an A320 cockpit. There's a team that has an A330 cockpit. Um, there's a couple 747 cockpits. And then uh, I think the rest are seven threes that are all part of World Flight. So yes, that would be one of the uh, that would be one of these small things that we are having are going to have to recalibrate here, as like I said, we're doing our testing. That's all just a config and coding software thing that will be fixed, but they do move on their own. 17 from Sweden. Nice. Well, welcome from Sweden. Good to hear. Uh, good to see you. Sweden's on my bucket list of places to visit one day. <laughs> I heard it's very beautiful in Sweden. It's 
So, but yeah, no, like I said, disclaimer, guys, this is all a test sim here, test stream, as we're just working out kinks and seeing what works and what doesn't work, so we can be ready to go here in two weeks. We're at about 90%-ish, uh, 90 90% 90 complete and ready to go. Working on the last 10%, which is just some small minor thing. That's cool, nothing wrong with that, Drax. You ran a sim yesterday yourself running P3D? Yeah, like I said, most full cockpit simulators run P3D. Um, there's some that do X-Plane. Um, but yeah, a lot of them are running P3D in full cockpit simulators. However, now that Microsoft has released multi-monitor support, that's the main reason why it wasn't done before. Because um, we had this on Microsoft earlier, and it will be on Microsoft moving forward. But it was just because of the screen warping visuals that you see here. We have about 100 and, I don't know, 180, more than 180, 220 degree view, field of view on the screens going around the sim. And it just wasn't, uh, like, you could get the view on there for Microsoft, but the sides would be, like, super zoomed in because it just didn't have multi-monitor support yet. But now that it does... So this is a 737-800, and the program that's running this is called ProSim. ProSim is the one that's injecting the plane into the simulator. Um, P3D is the simulator that we're using for the visuals, but the flight model and everything for the plane is from ProSim. To fly with A320 from Berlin, Gatwick today in Batsim, and I'm a newbie to Batsim, and man, it was busy. Yes, Air, Europe, <laughs> uh, Europe is uh, can definitely be very, very busy, for sure. Yeah, you know, Europe is definitely busy when it comes to ATC. It's just on so many airports in such a small space. Um, but you managed to land in the butter knife. Is this Flight Deck Solution product? Yes. This is a Flight Deck Solution cockpit, yes. FDS. So I can't really comment on how much it costs, not my simulator. So that would be a question for someone else. Oh, hold on. Flight tents in the back are giving me a, a buzz on the phone here. Bye, Doug. Bye, Doug. Yep. A little beep there was the sound of unlocking the cockpit door, as it is fully locking and unlocking. Oh, my God, what I let in the cockpit. The full Grinch has entered the cockpit. All right, let's see here. One second. YouTube. I'm going to switch over my tablet here to where I'm using YouTube for to on here. So that way, because we do have a Navigraph, um, Navigraph cam as well. Uh, the Grinch is going to be. <laughs> uh, I turned around and scared the shit out of me. I was like, what the? <laughs> Kenny, greetings. Good to see you, man. I think it's Kithiel sent you. I was just cruising with you. Nice. I sent you a picture of Discord to be able to see it. Uh, I can see it on my phone cam, yes. On my phone, I'd be able to see it. I couldn't show it on screen, on stream. Aviation Geek is in the house. What's going on, man? Squawk 7500. <laughs> All right, I'm up to Squawk 7500. The Grinch stole the plane. <laughs> oh, that was funny. That was funny. Hope everyone's doing well. And since you're really so far, take a look uh, when you can. Yeah, I'll take a look right now. Cam, give me a sec.
Take a look at the overlay you sent. Um, that looks awesome. Yes, uh, I like it. Um, just make sure that the one, like the one you sent me, Cam, make sure it's like the same size, or if not, maybe a tiny bit smaller than the one you sent me. I don't know if you can compare those or not. Uh, but the design is perfect. I like it. Yes, yes, yes. Um, uh, I mean, I think so. I mean, just make sure, like, the actual graphic itself is the right size. Like I said, however you sent me the mine, as long as it's not any bigger than the one you sent me, for my stream, then it should be fine. And then we'll have to update that so we can update it. I won't be able to live update it onto our stream, but we can definitely we can definitely uh, get it on there uh, for the next one. So you guys can see our Navigraph map there, our Navigraph view, so that way when we're going through all of our charts and everything, for example, this is, was our departure that we were on, which we're already past the departure, but this is our departure. You guys can see all this updating on the screen in real time. Um, but yeah, so we got views for Navigraph. We can add links to our tablet here on the captain side. Um, so, for example, this is our arrival, and we're on the Mor uh, Morgo 1 Alpha arrival. Um, and we're landing, uh, I believe, this way. So we're coming in this way. Um, yeah, we're coming on the left down here into runway uh, one, two. Uh, let me guess what's going on. Welcome, welcome. Good to see you. Good to see you. Uh, the nav. Oh, how do you get the nav data? You got to download the Navigraph Nav Data Manager. Yeah, download the Navigraph Nav Data Manager, and then it should link to the PMDG, and this is a simple. Uh, as simple as clicking just that one button that says update. How do you manage to run this in Microsoft? Uh, it runs in Microsoft, so basically, um, like I said, we use a program called ProSim. So even before the PBG came out, we were able to use a 737 in Microsoft because ProSim, what that does is injects its own plane into the simulator. So whatever simulator you're using, it injects its own plane. The simulator that we use is only strictly for visuals. The whole flight model of the plane is done from ProSim. Why well, you really need this for someone skilled as you? <laughs> Thanks. Uh, see, because I just got an for the first time. Ah, got it. Aviation with Elliot, what's going on? If you guys are just joining us too, please don't forget to smash down that thumbs up button if you guys are enjoying the stream and you like the cockpit and you're ready for world flight next week. Uh, press external view. <laughs> So there will be, um, so as you guys can see, they're updating, tech team right now is working with me. We have our displays now on the bottom uh, right. Um, displays on the bottom right here. Um, but we are going to have wing view set up or a view that shows the front of the plane. Uh, but there will be a view on the bottom, like right corner, that will show the simulator. It will either show the view that I'm looking at here out the cockpit, um, which, as you can see, when it's a little bright up in the clouds, it's hard to see from the camera view. But um, there will be an actual dock to view from the front view and also a wing view um, that you guys will be able to see. Uh, isn't there a giveaway? Uh, no, there's no giveaway. Uh, there should not be a giveaway. I don't think I put anything on there about a giveaway. Uh, but yes, no giveaway today, but there will be giveaways for World Flight, guys. You're not going to want to miss the giveaways. There's a ton of giveaways for our World Flight Week in two weeks, including giving away um, two custom FMCs from Flight Deck Solutions, who has graciously sponsored our channel. There will be a raffle for those, uh, two of those during that week. Uh, yes, no, so I'm staying on heading right now because 
If you look at, um, you should be able to see our flight director screen, you can see the traffic there to the right of us um, that I think might be Captain Kanda and whoever's flying with him. But when we took off, I thought we took off with enough spacing, but for whatever reason, like, we were really catching up with him. Um, so I had to move over and offset. Um, as we get closer, I'm going to have to do a circle to get them, uh, which right now, actually, we're going to do a circle to make space because we're about to hit our top of descent. So I'm going to do a 360 to give us space so we can make our descent and not be on top of each other. But yeah, we'll do a 360 here. How do you get Maverick Bucks? Uh, well, you can uh, gamble to win more, but uh, when you're watching the channel and talking in chat, you gain you gain Maverick Bucks every five minutes that you're in chat, every five minutes you're watching the stream. Um, so that's one way to gain them. Becoming a member, donating, subscribing, that also gives you more points. Uh, QA Pilot or something he streams in 55 minutes, yes. Aviation Pilot, Sim with Elliot, nice. I'm liking, I'm liking the name. So... And PFD doesn't work. Okay, yeah, now it is frozen. I see that. The flight director screen looks like it's working now. It's frozen, but they are working on it. Don't worry. The tech team is on it. They will get it refreshed and working. Like I said, this is all a test stream. We are testing everything to get our stream, because pretty much the only thing that we don't have really fully working yet is the stream stuff. Uh, but that's pretty much almost there. Like I said, you see that we're alive now. We're just working out some of the bugs. FMC is now working now. The tech team can hear me. Okay, uh, how do I see how much I have exclamation point points in chat? Yeah, exclamation point points in chat will get you will get you uh, how many points you have available. So we're going to start our descent here. I'm going to go ahead and readjust our uh, maybe not yet, quite yet. Maybe not quite yet. Um, so yeah, you got a hundred bucks, hundred map bucks there to use, sir. All right. So let's see. We're just giving ourselves a little bit of separation. We're going to make our U-turn back in now as well. Sounds good, Megas. No worries. So, yeah, the screen should be all up to date working now. But so now you can see our FM screen, FMC screen. So, you guys are going to be able to see what I can see on the FMC as we're pushing buttons here. Megas, appreciate you, man. Thank you for the support. I appreciate you. Um, we do plan on going live from our regular PC sim later today as well. Um, we're going to be doing someone's suggested flight from the Discord channel. We will be doing that later this evening, probably around 4 Pacific time, 4 p.m. Pacific, somewhere around there. Uh, but we will be going live from our channel um, again later today. Uh, so let me turn back in here. We're going to go direct to here. Oops. All right, we're going to go back on LNAV now. We're going to reset our altitude down to nine, below 9,000 here. We're going to go to 8,000. 
That's a start. Kilo Sam, what's going on? Good to see you. Welcome aboard our Australia flight here in the sim. How do I exchange my bucks? Uh, what do you want to exchange it for? <laughs> you can use it to gamble. There's nothing to purchase in the sim currently with him yet, but we are working on stuff you can will we'll be able to buy with. Uh, yeah, Faith. Has a PC handle this, so it's got two PCs running the simulator, not just one. Technical Kahoot, hey, what's going on? Hi, welcome aboard. Now make sure you guys don't forget to hit that subscribe button if you guys are not already subscribed and that thumbs up button for me. Uh, but yes, there's two computers. So one computer runs the simulator and the plane uh, software itself. Um, all the displays and stuff that you're seeing down here is a separate computer that runs the displays and VATSIM, um, and some of the sounds like the fire test. So we're going to get our seatbelt sign on now as we're getting ready to start our descent. Uh, let's see. Let's see. It has to have a console. You know, this is on. Uh, we're running uh, 3090s, not uh, 4090s. 4090s just barely came out. <laughs> uh, let's see, if you're in Australia, why aren't you upside down? <laughs> yes, because everything is backwards in Australia, right? I got you. I got you. Everything's backwards. Uh, is it real? I mean, this is a real simulator. <laughs> this is a real cockpit simulator, not a uh, not a real plane, but a real cockpit replica simulator. Yes. Uh, I mean, it got delivered, but we had a rookie, I should say, had to put it all together when it first came. Um, we've been here though, doing a bunch of modifications, helping with upgrades. Uh, but he's the one that originally put together the simulator when it came. Um, when he got this uh, last year, so, but we've helped with like, you know, galley system, the cockpit door and stuff you can see behind me um, in one of our views. When I switch to it, you'll be able to see the cockpit view uh, behind me. Uh, but it's a real working door. It's got a lock on it. Um, we actually have to buzz people in to let them in the cockpit. Rookie and the, rookie and the team have done an incredible job uh, with what we've been able to do here and get this stuff all put together. Absolutely incredible job. So it's got the full working galley, everything. Send me cockpit, I doubt it would fit in my room. <laughs> it takes up a whole garage, so that tells you how big it is. It takes up one entire half of a two-car garage. Maybe even a little bit more than half. So, like I said, you know, when, when he first got this sim, it was just a cockpit. It wasn't fully enclosed. Um, yeah, it was just a cockpit behind me here. It was open. There was no cockpit door, no galley section. All that stuff's been added on since he's gotten this last year. Um, so now it's fully enclosed. It's got a real working galley section with delta bins and the whole shebang. Which is absolutely incredible. Like I said, when we get the whole team here in two weeks, it's going to be so much fun. Um, we're going to be flying 24 hours a day straight. Um, we're going to be streaming on the channel. It'll be streaming on my channel. It'll be streaming on our SoCal Cruise channel. Um, it'll be streaming on Fly with Rookies channel. Um, all week, 24 hours a day. I will obviously not be flying 24 hours a day because I have to have some sleep at some point. <laughs> uh, but we have, uh, what, uh, maybe one of the tech guys can be in chat. And uh, I think we have 13 of us, 13 or 14 pilots on the team that are going to be flying in different lakes. Um, so I got I have flights. Now we're starting our descent here. Um, I got lots of lots of different legs. I'm flying with Rookie himself. I'm flying with Shadow. I'm flying with Hadley. 
Sheer Insane, I'm flying with Chemtrails, Jeff Aviano I have some legs with, I have some legs with Blue, uh, Blue Games, I have some legs with uh, Colin, another rural pilot, so I got legs with, I think pretty much everyone on the team, I got legs with Doug, I got, I think I'm flying with just about everyone on the team, um, at some point. So, Emily, hey, uh, like I said, I'm not the one that bought it. Not a question for me. I don't know how much this thing cost, uh, other than it costs a lot of money. It's, I mean, I mean, you guys can check out FDS if you want to purchase your own. <laughs> and Skippy, yeah, you can't forget Skippy. Sorry, Kenny, can't forget Skippy. Skippy will be here, too, as well as the Grinch will be here. If you guys saw the Grinch come into the cockpit a little bit ago, maybe the Grinch can come up here and... Uh, and visit again in a little bit and say hi before we land. But um, <laughs> um, but yeah, so yeah, the Grinch came in and surprised me. I thought he was taking over the cockpit. You know, Skippy is a diva. That is right. Wait, what do you mean you didn't buy it? Uh, so this is Fly with Rookie Simulator. You guys have seen Fly with Rookie in my chat. This is his simulator. We're at his house. Um, so he's the one that purchases. I am just a part of the team um, that gets to use this for our team, World Flight, SoCal Crew. Um, so my paying is helping with testing and making sure things work and fixing things, upgrading things. That's that's what what I do with the team. So, but we are descending nicely. Let me get some speed brakes out here. Going a little fast. Slow us down. So, we're going to do auto brakes three on our arrival. Let's get some arrival information in here. Oh, wrong. Uh, hold on. There we go. We'll get this arrival information in here. So, you guys should be able to see... Maybe they can bring back up Navigraph here for me. Uh, if we can bring up Navigraph. Um, but we're going to get our arrival information plugged in here. So our minimums for our ILS landing is going to be... Um, we're going to put 430 for the minimums. So let me put that in here. Oh, that's the wrong thing. That's not the minimums. We're going to put 430 in here. Okay, 4.30 is set. Can you guys still see everything? I lost the... I lost the visual on my iPad. Hope you guys can still see everything. Yeah, it's okay. It looks like you guys can. You know, one wrong move the entire thing might break. It's a little more sturdy than that. It won't break by just one wrong... Uh, one wrong uh, move. <laughs> I mean, one wrong move and our plane could crash, but, you know, the simulator's, simulator's pretty sturdy. I mean, there are some fragile things in here. Yeah, there are definitely some fragile things to watch in here, but yeah, so here's our charts here. These are our minimums. We're going to do 430 on the minimums you can see on there, and we're going to go all the way down to 4,000 feet now. So let me just check, just got news, okay, so... We're going to go down to 4,000 feet. Let's get our ILS frequency in here. So our course is going to be 120. So we're going to put 120 on the course here. On both sides. And then our ILS frequency we'll put in down here. That's going to be 109.9. 1099. Set. And 1099. Set. So our ILS frequency is programmed in and ready to rock and roll for our ILS approach down into uh, Hobart, I think is how you pronounce it, the airport, Hobart. So 
So let's slow us down some more here. Where's the background music? No background music here in the sim. Um, maybe during World Flight we might have something like that, but yeah, we don't have any background music currently working in the sim. So that's something we got to get worked out with uh, how we're going to be streaming into what channels and stuff like that. But uh, yeah, we don't have any background music. So during World Flight we'll have another pilot. We'll be also be in here. Two other guys will be in here. Jump seater. We do have a working jump seat behind us. Um, as well, so. Oh, I need to get rid of those damn bots. Hold on, guys. Let me log into my phone so I can get rid of those things. Those damn bots are everywhere. Can't even avoid them in a full cockpit. Alright, let's get some more drag out. So we're looking good on our descent so far here, going below 20,000 feet here. It's pretty much a straight-in approach here in ILS to runway 12. Um, we just had to do that circle because we had that traffic going the same direction as that same destination. And it was getting, uh, it was pretty, uh, we were getting really close. So yeah, my Streamlabs bot, apparently I never closed the uh, Streamlabs bot betting from... Uh, Never closed the betting from uh, our football stream the other day. So Streamlabs is still doing the, the betting. <laughs> Which we did lose, by the way. So we're going through the clouds now here, making our way downtown, making our way downtown. Uh, let's see, when we land, I have no idea where we're going to go park at, but we'll go park somewhere. I have no idea what gate they ate. Well, obviously, Delta probably doesn't really fly here in real life, but we are Delta 8317, so that's what we're doing. So 8,900 foot runway looks good. Let's put in our flap speed. We're going to do our flaps. Yeah, we can do a flaps 30 landing on this. So we'll get more drag out here.
version of this but an A320? <laughs> if this was an A320, I'd have my tray table in front of me with a nice Subway sandwich on top of it. <laughs> uh, I think I missed that stream. I guess I'm uh, still borrowing uh, Scott's couch. <laughs> You can park next to me. I'm Jetstar A320. Okay. I'll look for you on the ground. Like I said, we are testing out the Vets and model matching as well. I don't know if I was going to even show you as an A320, but because um, I feel like the people that took off from where we were at were in a 737s, but it was showing them as a CRJ for some reason. So, but we're coming in good. We're looking good. I'm going to go to speed intervene here. So I'm going to drop our speed down to. 2.30 on this approach. 2.30. Speed brakes are out. Speed brakes are out. No sliding table? No, not in a 7.3. Uh, how do they eat? Well, they don't eat uh, very well. They have to have food that's not messy, for one. But, uh, yeah, they have to leave the plane to eat or... They can still eat, like they can bring like a sandwich, like a PB and J or something like that, ham sandwich, and they can eat that. But they just they're just not as comfortable as the A320 cockpit for sure. That is uh, one of the things that pilots like the most um, when it comes to the A320 cockpit is that tray table. Myself including, that tray table is king. If only there was a way to like get this to like disappear like you do in the PC sim and then you could put a tray table in here, but <laughs> unfortunately it doesn't work that way in real life. <laughs> All right, so I should be able to see us now. I switched my chart over. You can see us coming down on the arrival here. I need to get my altimeter real quick. Oops. Altimeter real quick from Simbrief. You guys will be able to see all this here as well. Ten twenty seven will be our new altimeter, so we're gonna get that set and ready to go. Uh All right, there we go. 1027 is set here. We got to get that set on this side as well. Uh, so normally there'd be a pilot flying with me that would be doing that responsibility, so I wouldn't have to do that. But Max B, what's going on? Uh, I'm playing the right now, and I'm eating a good Italian sub from Subway. I'll just rub it in, Cam. I'll rub it in. Rub it in. I don't know why Boeing has a yoke. In my opinion, at a size six, so they could fit sliding table. <laughs> I mean, who knows? Maybe maybe Boeing will do that one day in the future. But I mean, that's that's really I think the main thing that sets Boeing and Airbus apart is the flight controls, right? I love me a good yoke, though. I love flying with a yoke more than I do a joystick. But I do wish I we had like a tray table. You looking forward to become a pilot? Good, yeah, man, it's going to be good. Yokes are better. <laughs> Apparently in the 7, 777X, they're trying to get a side stick with fly-by-wire systems. Oh, well, maybe. And maybe, like I said, I'm sure that probably could be the way of the future because it just makes more sense. But when it comes to, like, room and, and design, you know, the yoke system is just a more... is just a more... Uh, Old school design, I guess you could say. And it's easier because not in front of you. I mean, that too. I mean, it's just a different feel. I mean, it's just what you get used to. We are flying right through the clouds right now, though. So we have no visual flying through the clouds. So, but well, we got our... We got our approach ready to go. We are about uh, 
about 30 miles out from the airport or so on our descent here. I know I broke through the clouds there. So we did something wrong that way. Didn't follow our VNAP profile, but that's all right. So we do have working security cams in here as well, so we can see our we can see who's in the galley by the cockpit door with a monitor that's overhead on the overhead here. You it's hard you guys won't be able to see it right now, but as well as we got a cam on the captain's side that shows the outside of the garage, inside the garage. Just in case you're here late flying at night by yourself. Um, so we'll get our landing lights back on. Uh, Ding the cabin I'm now prepare for our arrival. We're going to arm our localizer now. Uh, Foster, what's going on? So sick. Right? The extra are more precise, give you more control, in my opinion. Uh, yeah, pretty much. You better, better. Well, we're going to see. You guys are going to see my landing rate. We're going to see. <laughs> We shall see, right? So, 120, everything is set up appropriately. It should be. 1099, 120, 1099, 1099. Localizer should capture here soon. Approach mode. All right, let's start slowing our plane down here. Bring out flaps one. Glide slope should capture, hopefully. We're going to go flaps five here. Flaps five. You guys will have to give me a second as we're preparing for landing here. I will uh, and I go back to the desktop after this. Um, I mean, same way you would a normal computer. So we're just kind of trying to keep an eye here, make sure that we start descending. So our actual landing altitude is 50 feet, apparently. This is going to be a steep descent, according to this thing here, so. Alright, localizer's been captured. That's good. The light sub should be captured here as well. There we go. Should be starting descent. Let's slow down to 180. Hobart traffic, Delta 8317, 15 mile final runway 12, Hobart.
Alright, we're gonna go five plus ten. Slowing us down with this approach, like I said, it's uh, gonna be a steep. I feel like it's gonna be a steep descent here. Uh, you see me? All right. Oh, share the share the stream, man, and get the viewers up. Share the stream, hit that subscribe button, that thumbs up button. That all helps project the stream out there. Are we on VATSIM this thing? Yes, we are on VATSIM. We are on VATSIM. We're landing runway 12, Cam. All right, I will catch up on chat here in a moment. Glide slope's been captured. And we're looking good. So I will catch up in chat here once we're on the ground so I can make sure. It's a lot of stuff to do as a single pilot in here. A lot, uh, not as easy as it is on the PC to reach and grab everything. Well, I mean, it, it is easy, but it's just a little more complicated. But yeah, we got some uh, winds right now, about 18 knots. Not looking too bad, though. So I'll show you guys on the next flight, too. Our printer does work, too, so I can print out our ATIS and our flight information from our handy-dandy uh, Boeing printer in our pedestal. That all is fully working as well. Uh, or if you already subscribed, well, you can share the stream on social media. Uh, what throttle is moving on its own? Ghost? <laughs> yes, now the throttles do move. They are fully working throttles. This is a full replica. This is a real Boeing throttle. So this throttle that we have in this cockpit is not a replica. It is a real Boeing throttle. Um, that has been made into uh, it has been made into uh, usable for the sim. Right, we have the runway in sight, guys. I'm going to go ahead. Like I said, I got to stop looking at chat so I can get that nice butter landing. Camera yeah, notified. Final lights are on. We've been cleared for landing. You just start switches over to continuous. You guys have been notified. Cabin's been notified. We're going to go gear down. I'm going to bring our speed back now. And we'll get fully configured. Flaps 15's coming out. Prep 25. Hobart traffic, Delta 8317, 5-mile final runway 12, Hobart. And flaps 30. All right, runway's inside. We're going to hand fly it in here. My throttles. And my controls. And we're looking good on the glide path so far. Or a little to the right. A little to the right. Oh, like hazy all of a sudden. That's our landing lights reflecting off the fog right now. <laughs> ah, here we 
there it goes. <clears throat> Minimums. Continue. Two hundred. One hundred. Come on, get down. There we go. We're on the ground. The roosters are out. Nose down gently. Welcome to Hobart. Hey, nuts. Stone Reversers, manual breaking. Reversers stowed. Welcome to Hobart. We're going to do a turnaround here and back taxi. So let's do a turnaround on the runway here. So it is nice and foggy on the ground here because our landing lights are hitting the fog. But we made it. You guys should have seen the landing rate. I don't know what that was. You guys can let me know. Auto brake is coming off, though. Our spoilers come in. We're going to get our flaps in now as we taxi back. We'll fire up the APU as well. What about traffic Delta A317? Back taxiing back to Delta to the ramp. Hobart. Okay, landing. So once we get to the gate, I will look in chat as we get ready for the next flight here. This is good. It's definitely dark. I'm not sure what all this extra light I'm seeing right now is, but I'm going to go park somewhere over here. Can't really see the parking spots very well. I don't know what all this light is right now. All right, so I can't really see, but we're going to go park somewhere over here. I don't know if we're on a taxiway right now or not. Or a gate area. All right, we're gonna stop right there though. Parking brake is on. Engine gens are coming on. Engine bleeds are off. The bleed is on. Engine one is coming off. Engine two is coming off. Transponder on the standby. Taxi light is off. Anti collision light. Seatbelt signs are off as well. Boom. Probe heat. No heat's coming off. The auto damper, fuel pumps. And uh, we're looking good. Welcome to Hobart. Yeah, I don't think I parked at a, the terminal at all, but that's all right. <laughs> yeah, that is all right. Yeah, I definitely don't think, according to the charts, I parked at the terminal. I think I parked inside a field. 
but I can't see anything right now to know, so. Uh, what was the landing rate? What did it say, guys? Let me know what the landing rate was. Minus 107? Nice. So, yep, the only thing is I just didn't park in the right area. <laughs> but that's all right. That is all right. All right, we're going to get the next flight ready to rock and roll here in a second, guys. Give me uh, just a couple minutes. We're going to get our flight plan refiled. Let me get us on ground power. Let me get us on ground power. There we go. If you can come off, fuel pump is off. And there we go. All right. Give me guys uh, just a couple minutes, and I will be right back in the cockpit here in uh, just a moment.
go here very shortly. Did not die. Did not die. Getting the next flight ready. Just help a minute.
Over traffic, one thirty nine six five. Exiting to Olympic Point, runway one two. All right, guys, I'm back in the cockpit. Hopefully, that didn't take too long, young aviator. What's going on? Good to see you. All right. Just get this repositioned in here. So we're going to get our flight plan ready to go here for the next flight. We'll get everything loaded up as quick as possible. And uh, get on over to... Uh, Hey, what traffic did this, uh, supervisor uh, will now be pushing back? I think we're going to Accolade, that's where we're going, so... You guys can follow along here and see how we file our flight plan. So, we are... Delta 8317. This is our world flight call sign, guys, so that's why I know Delta is not, would not be here at this Australian airport in the 737. Um, but for all intents and purposes, uh, uh, YMHB, YMHB. Well, this is what we'll be flying for world flight next week. That's our call sign all week. So that's why we're using it. That's the call sign for this sim. It's the designator for this sim, basically. All right. I'd like to have my flight plan in the Delta format. I'll leave it in pounds. I'll select that. And we'll generate our flight plan here. Uh, yes, we are in VATSIM, Young Aviator. We're on VATSIM. we got other pilots here with us. Someone just had just spoken on... Uh, someone just spoke on VATSIM, so... Um, all right, so here's our flight plan. This one's a little bit longer. One hour and 50 minutes on the flight plan to Alkalade is where we're going now next. Be following along Mr. Captain Canada and his crew over to Accolade. Um, all right, so it looks good. We're going to file this on VATSIM. Over traffic, one to my attic, five, backtracking, Raleigh, one, two. Alright, so that's good. Alright, so sim brief is there. And we got our flight plan. So now I'm going to get my Navigraph charts loaded. Cap is pushing back now, which is fine, because on this runway here you have to back taxi down the runway, so it's definitely going to be some delays between flights taking off and departing. So we're going to open up our flight plan here. Come on. There it goes. All right. So departing runway 12 again here. You can see our charts there. We'll pin our charts here in a moment. Uh, but let's go down to our FMC, which you guys should be able to see now. So we're going to go here, and we're going to go to FMC, ident, position. Um, Actually, no, we need to go here, and we're going to reset. There we go. Clear that up. So on the first officer's side, I'm going to get the weather on their setup. So we're going to go position. We're in uh, Yankee Mike Hotel Bravo. And we'll throw that in there. We'll go to our route page, and we'll request our flight plan. All right, that ding right there, if you guys can get a ding, means our flight plan is ready. So we will uh, load our flight plan in, puts in all of our route information. You can see there all the routes. Make sure it's taking off. And then we're going to activate, and we can execute. We can request wind data as well if we want to request the wind data. On here, though, I'm going to go ahead and request. We're going to request our weather. Um, 
So Y M H B. We'll put that in there. And then we can do Y pad as well. And then we're going to send that off. You'll see that we'll be able to actually print out this weather data. Uh, let me know when you're about to push back. All right, Cam, I will do. James, what's going on? Thumbs up, man. What's going on? Uh, yes, we are flying alongside him. Yes. Um, all right, so out of here, departing runway 12. That's how we came in. We're going to be departing on the Clark 2 departure. And we're going to execute that. Yeah, so we're going to execute that. We'll go to our leg page, look for any discontinuities. We got one there. Um, so there's our weather. We're going to print this out. So we got our handy dandy weather. I don't know if you guys can see that or not. You should be able to see this. Print it out a little weather from our printer. So we got our weather here. It's definitely overcast. QNH is 1027, which is already set and is good on both sides. Um, it is raining in Alcalade as well. Man, lots of rain. Everywhere we went last night testing airports, like it was rain galore. <laughs> uh, I don't know what's up with the weather lately, but there's just a ton of rain. Um, all right, so I'm going to go on this leg page here, and we'll fix a discontinuity there. Oh, no, 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 no. Fix, erase that. Go like that, and then our arrival into Alkalade, we're planning for runway 23 is what we're planning for. So ILS, um, let me see if it's going to be Yankee or Zulu. Bring up the charts for Alkalade. Um, it's going to be a direct into Alkalade, so we can actually probably do this in the air. We're going to program the arrival in the air since we got almost two hours till we get there. So let's go to our init ref page. We'll request our performance data now. Performance data is going to come in, and then uh, we will load that up there. And Scott is going to 36,000 feet, so we're going to get 36,000 feet in the overhead. I'm going to get our APU fired up now as well. We are getting close. Seatbelt sign can come on as fuel's in our aircraft now. The yaw damper and the window heats are going to come on. And that's all good there. Engine bleeds can come on. All right, so 36,000 feet. We're going to just double-check that with our flight plan, make sure everything's good. 36,000 feet. We need at least 27, 20.7 uh, 20 on the fuel. We got 20.9. That is good. Transition altitude is 10,000. Our cost index is 23. That is all correct. And we'll execute that. We're going to go to our N1 limit page here. We're going to do a flex of 30 on the departure. Flaps 5 is going to come in there. We're going to get our center of gravity on the other FMC screen here, which is going to be 23.1 on our CG. B speed is 140, 142, and 151. So 151 is set in there. That looks good. I'm going to recycle the flight directors real quick because we didn't do that last flight. And we're going to go straight up to 36,000 feet. As there is no ATC online currently. That all looks good. Um, I can arm the LNAV as well. And put our runway heading in here for a departure. So let me bring up the rest of my charts now. APU spooling up. We're going to be ready for pushback here in just a couple moments. Yeah, just a couple minutes we'll be ready to push. Um, so we got those charts. Uh, Delta A317 ready, pushing back onto hotel. Uh, Hobart. Alright. Alright, so that's all looking good.
All right. Cam, when I was coming in, could you hear me on VATSIM calling in my approach? Are you able to hear me on VATSIM? FYI, just let me know. I don't know if you're on Unicom when I was doing it or not, but. All right, so. APU Gens are coming on the bus. APU Bleeds are coming on. We're going to get our fuel pumps on. Fuel pumps are coming on. We do have fuel in the center tanks. So we'll get that on here in a bit. Electric hydraulics can come on now as well. And let's disconnect our ground power. And you'll see how we do our pushback here on ProSim. It's all on the chart still. So we're going to disconnect ground power there, turn that off, and then we're ready for push and start now. Uh, transponder is transponding. Flaps are clean, everything good there. Auto brake RTO. And let's do it, guys. Let's ready for our uh, pushback here. So we're going to break off. All right, pushback nose to the right. Here we go. Beacon light is on, and we are pushing back. It is nighttime, apparently, in the sim right now. So it's going to be a little hard to see. But that's all right. All right, let's go ahead and clear for engine start. Packs are coming off. Number two over to ground. Twenty five and two. Oh, there is Cap. I see him taking off. All right, we'll stop the pushback right here. Brakes coming on. Waiting for engine one to engine box trailer seven one four lining up on runway one two at uh, Albert Airport. Okay, engine one's good. Firing up engine number two. Or sorry, firing up engine one number two is good. Joy Flying, what's going on? John Flying, what's going on, man? Welcome aboard. You're pushing now? Uh, I think I see you pushing, Cam. All right, introducing fuel. All right, engine one's coming alive. I'm going to get back over to my taxi charts. Let's get flaps five set. Engine start there is cut out. Engine to Australia, 794, taking off on runway 12 at Hobart Airport. All right, engine number one is good. Generator's coming on. Pack is coming on. Isolation valve auto. APU bleed off. APU's off. Taxi light's coming on. I'm ding the cabin. Let them know that we are ready to go. And brake is off. Make sure our trim is set. Trim is good. 
And let's see if we can't taxi. It's going to be very hard to see. We've got to really use our charts here to guide us. Uh, I can see the taxi line now. I see the plane coming to Butte's cam there. So we're going to hold short right here with the plane in front of us. So there you go, you can see the plane in front of us. Um, we can probably actually go around because there's a, another taxiway right here to turn out of. But So yeah, we'll go around behind the plane here. There's room. Hellbar traffic, Jetstar 680, taxiing the runway 1, 2, Hellbar. Oh, there goes a plane across the street in front of us, taking off, departing. Hobart traffic, Delta A317, back taxi, runway 12 for departure, Hobart. All right, guys, here we go. We're going to back taxi back now for our departure. Clear left, clear right. So it is definitely very Hobart, South Station, 680, holding short runway 1 to a Charlie Hobart. All right. All throttle is going to be armed. And to start switches over to continuous. Being in our cabin. So we're going to make the turn here. All right, make the turn. All right, final check flaps for five. And there, transponder, T-A-R-A. Uh, Center fuel pumps are on. Everything looks good. Right. We are ready to go. Hobart traffic, Delta 317 taking off runway 1 2. Hobart. Alright, here we go, guys. Sit back and draw the flight. Engine's up to 40%. Stable. And Toga. Hundred knots. Hobart traffic, the first six eighty back taxi one right one two Hobart. Uh, 
Pause the right. You can come up. Now's coming on. You guys can see the flight director there, trying to keep that box right in the cross, keeping the black box in the cross as best as possible. And we'll go flaps up here. Flaps up, landing gear can go off, auto brake is off, taxi light off, and engine start switches back to the off position. Getting a little bit bumpy up here. And Hobart traffic, jet pass 680, departing runway 12, Clark 5, departure, Hobart. All right, all pilots coming on. And let me check in with chat here. You want twice? Say nice, Emily. Nice. Coming in with the winds. It shows my dome light on in cockpit, really? That's cool. Oh. All right, standard pressure, check, cross-check, we are looking good. Hey, hey, Gomes, what's going on? Welcome to the chat. Welcome, welcome, welcome. Good to see you. So we are on our way to Accolade.
All right, so we're climbing though. We're looking good. Passing through 15,000 feet. Once we get to 18,000 feet, the landing lights will come off. And most likely the seatbelt sign, as long as we don't have any turbulence. We can see our traffic there on our uh, screen there. You can see traffic's about, uh, about 30 miles ahead of us. We got traffic. I don't know if that's a traveler that just took off with us. He's just taking a different route, but so far everything's looking good. So far everything is looking good. All right, we're past 18,000 feet. Landing lights are coming off. Seabelt sign's coming off. Uh, hey, Gomes, there's a cool down period. You have to wait like two, like three minutes before you can gamble each time. Um, so, yeah, no need to spam, but you got to wait at least like there's a three to five minute cool off period. So you can only do it like every three minutes or so. So yes, if you guys haven't already, please don't forget to smash down that thumbs up button and that subscribe button if you're not already subscribed. We're going to be doing a world flight event in less than two weeks. Not this upcoming weekend, but the next weekend. The first weekend of November is world flight. Where we will be flying for uh, <coughs> a whole week straight for charity. So it's going to be fun. So, but uh, we'll also be flying, like I said, we will be flying later this evening, tonight, on our home PC stream as well. Uh, I'm not sure what flight we're doing tonight. Um, i got to look and see what's in my Discord channel suggestions, because it is Suggestion Sunday. So we will be doing someone's, uh, we'll be doing someone's uh, suggested flight tonight. Um, I know I saw one in there. I just don't remember what I was thinking I wanted to do.
All right, let's see here. Um, so flights for tonight. I was thinking about maybe we could do some Hawaiian ops tonight. I don't know. What do you guys think? Southwest Hawaiian ops. Um, that's been requested in the channel. Some 737-700 inner island Hawaiian island ops for Southwest. Um, that's kind of what I was thinking about doing tonight. Um, been a minute since I've been in Hawaii. Um, but yeah, thinking about doing uh, like two or three flights in Hawaii tonight. I don't know what you guys think about that, but. So it's either either several flights in Hawaii, or we could do just one flight from LAX to Vancouver. Someone requested that one. Well, I'm thinking some Hawaiian Island Ops tonight. good everything so far so good we're still climbing to our cruise we can see our traffic in front of us now we can see canada in front of us and the guy flying with them or a couple guys flying with them um everyone's got a hawaii my treat hey don't play with my emotions jordan <laughs> don't toy with my emotions let's do it good treat I'll fly. You pay for the nice hotel resort on the beach. Mr. Mark's in the house. What's going on, Mark? Good to see you. Good to see you, my friend. What is going on? Hey, what's going on, my friend? Welcome aboard. All hope all's well with everyone, man. Hopefully, you guys are enjoying the full cockpit. Like I said, it's going to be so much more, even livelier, once we start flying with with everyone else in the cockpit. Um, there'll pretty much be three people in the cockpit most of the time: two pilots and a jump seater. Um, I don't know if rookies out there, rookie, can you show the the back uh, view of the cockpit real quick? I just want to point out the jump seater. Or maybe the Grinch wants to come in here and, and show the jump seat. But uh, but we do have a working jump seat that folds out, just like it would in a real Boeing. Uh, oh, there he goes. He switched the cam. Um, so if I show you guys here in the, I uh, point to it. Um, so right here we do have a fully working and folding out jump seat, as you guys can see here me unfolding. Um, that someone can sit in just like the real thing. Um, so we do have a full working jump seat, folds out pretty damn cool if you ask me. So yes, huge no skippies in chat to you, Mr. Mark. Mr. Shadow's here. Welcome, Shadow. So, yeah, it's nice full working jump seat. Folds in and out. Works beautifully. That is the, our newest addition to the cockpit, really. That was just recently, uh, recently installed. We finally got it in from Europe where it was made. Had to have it custom made for the sim. Um, so, yeah, we just barely got that in. Looks, uh, looks great. Works great. So we can have people ride along with us. Um, 
Yeah, we're gonna have a printer here that's gonna print out for the all the donations during World Flight for charity. Let's get our center fuel pump tanks off. And uh, but yeah, no, definitely, definitely, I'm going to be so much fun. I can't wait. I wish it was freaking World Flight already. I wish it was World Flight already. We got snow skippies in chat. Oh, hold on. We're getting a call from the galley. Flight deck. Yep. Got a visitor coming into the cockpit. Oh, God. Close the door. Scary. Scary. Oh, we're all going to die. Oh, my. Someone help me. Someone save me. It's been nice knowing you guys. It's been nice knowing you. It is uh, about to kill me with the jump seat right now. He's about to hit me over the head with it. I can see it already. Oh, my. I should have never opened the door. I don't know what's going on right now. So, that is the jump seat. That is the jump seat all set up now and operational by, uh, by it. It has set up the jump seat. I don't know how I feel about that. How slow is he to <laughs> Oh, boy, oh, boy, oh, boy. Well, if you didn't like clowns, I'm sorry. <laughs> I thought we were getting the Grinch. I don't know what happened to the Grinch. I'd rather have the Grinch in the cockpit. But I think that one was for Shadow. We know Shadow loves his clowns. <laughs> he absolutely loves his clowns. Yes, he does. Cam, welcome back. You just missed it coming into the cockpit and scaring the daylights out of us. I thought we were being taken over again. Hopefully I get a smooth takeoff. We should have a nice good smooth landing once we get to Accolade. It's going to be lots of fun. Well, we got a ways to go. This is why we check the camera before we open it. <laughs> Uh, I know. I didn't check it. I just checked. Uh, well, I mean, I guess I should have. The, the galley called me on the phone, but I guess they could have been calling under duress, right? They, they could have been calling me under duress. I didn't even think about it. <laughs> uh, but yes, we got to check our security camera next time and not let psychopath into the cockpit. <laughs> uh, you are right. No. I, uh, screwed up on that one. Security. Uh-oh. I pushed a button on accident. I pushed a button. But, uh, nope, we're looking good. We're on Unicom. I don't think any ATCs online. I'm going to check, though. I'm going to check. Where is my VAT scope? We're going to check. Nope. Hold on. Fly deck. Yep. Someone's asking to be buzzed in. Oh, God. It is back. I feel like if I don't buzz him in, he'll kill me. Oh, God. I need, I need like, a eject button. <laughs> Where's my eject button? Eject. There's no balloon in here, though, so I guess I'm safe. Why didn't he just have a balloon before he kills me? Oh shit. He's coming in. He's going to sit in it. <laughs> I got a Squawk 7500. 7500! You've been uh, 
Someone let ATC know we've been hijacked. Jesus Christ. <laughs> well, Shadow's not watching anymore. Texas State role play. <laughs> Texas State role play. That made me laugh. Now I'm just thinking that we're going to have the Chainsaw Massacre in here because you're a Texas State role play. Hello, though. Welcome. <laughs> uh, oh, boy. Oh, boy. I'm going to have nightmares forever. Uh, yes, i got to manly die in there, but it's easy. <laughs> Thanks. Are you uh, hiring chat mods? Um, we will be as we increase our mods. Oh, boy. What is he doing to me? He's getting too close to my face. I don't know what he's doing. Uh, do I have a Discord? Yes. Exclamation point Discord in chat. We'll get you the link to my Discord. Um... Um, but yeah, soon we're going to be adding a mod pretty much like every 500 subscribers um, at this point. So once we get to 1,500, we will be taking uh, applications for another mod. Oh boy, now he's in the now he's in the now he's in the co-pilot seat. What is that? What is happening? He is taking over. Oh god. <laughs> oh god. He is taking over. Watch your controls. <laughs> I don't know if I have control anymore. I have no control. Uh, but yes, so, so there will be a channel going up in Discord here shortly, uh, if I survive this flight, for applic mod applications um, and requirements to be a moderator and all that kind of good stuff as we approach 1,500 subscribers. So make sure you guys smash down that. Oh, Jesus Christ, is right in the face. Make sure you smash down that subscribe button and that thumbs up button to help continue growing our channel and our amazing community that we have built together and uh, as we continue to grow here on the channel. Got lots of things in the works for the channel. Got some real life stuff in the works for the channel that I'm hoping hopefully comes to pass. Hopefully we'll be doing some uh, helicopter ops in real life or something of that nature coming soon. Um, well, that's definitely going to be a lot of fun once we get that going. So, yeah, a lot of, a lot of, a lot of things coming. we got a virtual airline. Our own virtual airline is coming soon. Uh, our own virtual airline will be coming uh, within about a month's time. Sometime in November it should be launched. And that virtual airline is going to be called the Four Aces. So, Four Aces came in the name as in our hub is going to be... Our main headquarters is going to be Las Vegas. Four Aces, obviously Aces for gambling, Las Vegas. Aces for Ace Pilots, which is our top membership channel, Aces. Um, four Aces is the play on the Four Seasons Hotel, which is like, you know, top of the line hotel, so top of the line airline. Um, but yes, so we're going to have several hubs of Vegas. It's Vegas, San Antonio, Boston, and maybe one other um Maybe Portland or something like that in the U.S. anyways. And then we'll have to figure out... Uh, and then we'll have to figure out uh, where internationally we'll have our first international hub at. But we will have flights everywhere, so... As well as we got custom... Uh, we got custom... Uh, uh, which we got liveries coming as well for our, for our planes, so... So yeah, custom liveries will be coming for the planes as well. Our fleet will start with the 737-800s and the A320s. So that's going to be a lot of fun. I can't wait for that to take place. Um, we got some cool scenery ideas that we're working on that are kind of secret at the moment that are going to be incorporated into the virtual airline as well. Um, so you'll be able to see like custom gates and warehouse maintenance and stuff for us. A lot of cool stuff is coming. So, but we'll do some Hawaii ops tonight in our regular sim once we're home uh, from Rookie's house. So we're testing all day today into the afternoon and then uh, this evening we'll be doing some Hawaii ops back in the uh, regular sim and then uh, Oh, that traffic was like really close. I 
think we're like right underneath some traffic right now. Um, but yeah, so. And then next weekend we'll be doing another full cockpit stream next weekend, next Saturday. Um, but that's going to be at a different full cockpit down in San Diego. Um, it's another fellow World Flight team member. Um, he flies his sim for World Flight as well, uh, but he flies for Team New Zealand. He flies remotely for Team New Zealand. Um, him and his buddy, there's two of them, they switch off. New Zealand guy will fly his daytime legs, and then Pat will, uh, and then the San Diego guy will fly his daytime legs. So that's the plan for next Saturday. We should be there. So this is in uh, California, JB. California. So we're going to be enjoying it. So like I said, everyone's flying in in a two weeks here for the team. A lot of team members flying in for World Flight. going to be so much fun. The uh, Mr. It that you uh, saw come in here in the Grinch earlier, uh, they will be flying with us as well for World Flight. <laughs> I don't know if they'll be flying in that mask, but uh, in that costume. <laughs> but they will be flying uh, with me and a couple of my legs. So I look forward to that. It's going to be a lot of fun. That'll be a lot of fun. And of course we have our uh, our lovely flight attendant that is going to be serving us our wonderful uh, Biscoff cookies, snacks, um, snacks, chips, drinks. Oh yeah. If we, had, like I said, if we had an Airbus on the tray table, I'd be having me a Subway sandwich in here right now. <laughs> Got to order some Subway, have it delivered. Order some Subway and have it delivered. So, any of you guys in chat, did you guys uh, do your, did I just land? No, we are, we're at 36,000 feet, my dude. We landed a little bit ago. We went into, uh, went into Hobart. Well, we just departed Hobart about, uh, I don't know, about 40 minutes ago now. Departed Hobart about 40 minutes ago on our way to Accolade. I think we got just about an hour or so to get to Accolade. So, but yeah, it is nighttime right now outside in the sim. It was daytime when we got to Hobart. Nighttime now after we departed. So that's why the screen in front of us is uh, dark because we're in the night sky. So we got the map on there so you can see our map and how we're doing on there. But, you know, we are on bad sim, and we are looking good. Um, yeah, we're looking good. Nice, good flight. We're having uh, having lots of fun. Nothing beats flying a full cockpit simulator. Nothing. I mean, don't get me wrong. I get tons of enjoyment flying at my desk and flying in the regular sim. Uh, it's still very enjoyable. I still love that. But nothing just beats the experience of being in here, having all these full switches, the full buttons. You know, you're not using a mouse to click on everything. Like every, everything in the sim, when you're on the computer, looks so far away. Like it, it looks so far away when you're like having to zoom your mouse around and and uh, click on everything. But when you're here in the sim, like especially like the overhead panel, man, it's right in your face. <laughs> like everything is a simple arm's reach away. Um, yeah, it's crazy. Everything is just a simple arms reached away. Um, so, you know, it's crazy. 
Uh, do you have to rent this, or is it free? Uh, I do not have to rent this, JM. This is Fly With Rookie Sim, and I am a part of SoCal Crew, and we are a part of World Flight, which is the event coming up here in two weeks in November. Um, so I'm a part of the team, so since I'm a part of the team, I don't have to rent it, but Rookie does rent it. So if you're ever in Southern California and you would like to find it, he does rent it out. Um, um, yeah, he does rent it out for a price for however long you want to do it for um, and what you want to do in it. Um, but yeah, no, he does have this as a business, and he is uh, right now. I mean, he's currently in his garage right now, but he's got a place that he's going to be renting after World Flight. Um, that this will be the new permanent home for the sim, um, and as well as the sim will be on Microsoft. It'll be Microsoft moving forward after World Flight. So yeah, no. Normally something like this would cost money. It's not free. It's uh, you know, we pay, I guess, our dues by being a part of the team and 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 participating in our events, participating in our uh, events as well as helping upgrade stuff, helping fix things, helping program things. Um, I've been working uh, pretty much whenever you don't see us streaming. <laughs> On our regular PC, we've been here for about the past month now. Every every other day, we're not streaming. We're here, been working on this, getting it ready to go for World Flight. Uh, we, uh, I've been a part of the team since February. Um, the whole idea for the World Flight team started, I believe, towards the end of last year with Fly the Rookie and, and some of their team members, and it's kind of grown since then. Um, Streambot should be dropping links in chat for it, but you can go to flywithrookie.com slash worldflight, and that will show all of the team members that are on the team um, that will be coming here in a couple weeks' times to do a whole bunch of flying. There is 45, there is 45 regular legs to World Flight, but we're also doing pre-positioning, so we're actually going to be flying the day before World Flight and taking our plane from its home base in Ontario, California, and taking it all the way to Sydney uh, before World Flight starts Saturday at 2 p.m. our time. Um, so we'll be departing Friday at 3 a.m. out of Ontario, going to Honolulu and making our way, um, as we make our way to Sydney, with uh, there's eight flights, um, I believe, to Sydney, and then there's five flights home. So that's an extra 13 flights on top of the 45 flights we already have, which makes it a total of... What is that, 58 flights in total for that week? So yeah, there'll be 58 flights in total. I think I'm a part of, whether it's flying or jump seat right now, of about 23 of those legs. So yeah, there it is. Fly with Rookie dropped in the chat. The man, the myth, the legend himself in chat there dropping the link um, to the website. Yeah, check it out, guys. Like I said, you're not going to miss it. We're going to be doing tons of giveaways all week, including the two grand prizes currently of two FMCs from Flight Deck Solutions. Uh, yeah, two of these, the same FMCs that you're seeing in this cockpit right now will be given away during World Flight. Um, so we're not going to be announcing which leg they're going to be giving away, though. You just got to be there and present to win. So, but, uh, yeah. These two FMCs will be raffled off for World Flight. When we pick Boeing or Airbus, it's going to be Boeing. Two Boeing FMCs, because they're sponsoring us, and we're flying a Boeing 737. So there'll be two Boeing FMCs from Flight Deck Solutions is what we're raffling off. Um, so we're going to be having a combination of raffles and giveaways. So the difference between that, giveaway is completely free. A raffle, um, since we are trying to raise money for our charity, we are all this whole week is for... Um, Raising money for charity for Orbis, which is on the website. Um, so some giveaways will be completely free. The bigger giveaways, though, are going to require you to enter the raffle, um, which I believe at this point is just a uh, at least a $5 donation at some point, and it gets you entered into the raffle uh, when we're giving it away. 
But five bucks for something that's worth about sixteen hundred dollars, not bad. Oh, I was uh, just told and corrected. Sorry, you can actually pick whether you want the Airbus or a Boeing FMC. I have been told by the boss, the head, the head chief, um, that yes, you can actually select from FDS whether you want a Boeing or an Airbus one. So even better, now you get to pick Boeing or Airbus FMC on the raffle. Minimum five dollar donation. Well, obviously, you know, anything greater than that's greatly appreciated because it's all going to charity. Uh, but yes, just got to be present to win. So, yep, you get a pick. It's even better. I didn't know that. That's actually pretty awesome. I did not know that. Appreciate you sharing that with me, Rook. So, yeah, you get to pick, which is uh, really generous of uh, Flight Deck Solutions for sponsoring our team. So, a huge shout out to them for the sponsorship. Absolutely, incredibly kind to them. So, now that we're in Air 2, we can go ahead and let's go ahead and pre program our. We can program an approach into here. We can start working on the approach, anyways. So. We know what runway we're planning for. We're planning for 2-3 currently, which I'm going to go ahead and look up the ATIS. That's not the right thing. We're going to go and look up the ATIS here and just make sure. I don't want that to load. Um, just to make sure. Why is that on here? No, let's take that off. Um, yeah, I just want to confirm the ATIS. Like I said, it's, uh, it was a two-hour flight, so make sure the wind hasn't changed at all on us. Adelaide winds right now. It's raining, of course, and winds are 180 at 7. So 180 at 7 to Accolade. We'll bring up those charts, and we'll take a look at what we can expect here for our approach. Let's open the charts. So we said 180, right? 180 would be perfect for. Yeah, perfect for runway 23 would work for 180. That's good. A little bit of a crosswind, not bad though. Um, so 23 definitely works. Now we want to choose which approach. Are we going to do a Zulu? Or are we going to do a Yankee? All right, we could do an RNAV. Um. We'll do an RNAV approach. Uh, it's probably going to be working better. Wait, since All right, so yeah, we're going to plan for the RNAV uh, Zulu. So uh, let's program that in here. ILS 23 Zulu. And then we don't have a star approach. It didn't give us one. Uh, plan plan has us going direct. I mean, we could look at some of these approaches, but. Just the way they were coming, I don't think any of the approaches really work.
Well, I guess we could take the RNAV from Drina. Oh, that's RNAV arrivals. So I guess we're good there. Um, Only thing I can tell you is that it will be definitely during the daytime. Set up our arrival here. All right, so yeah, we're using the Drina 9 Alpha arrival cam. Um, yeah, so Drina 9 Alpha arrival for the ILS 23 Zulu approach. Um, well, it was rifle sometime during the day, not late at night. Yes, no, uh, it's definitely going to be during the peak hours of streaming for sure. Um, because obviously, like I said, the whole point of that and them supporting us is to hopefully drive donations to support our charity, uh, which is Orbis. So we're trying to support our charity, and uh, that's the whole reason that these uh, vendors, I mean, we got uh, a lot of donors um, and sponsors for the channel uh, for, uh, for that time. Uh, let's see here. I think Rookie can tell me. Rookie, let's see here. Do, 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 do. Um, sponsors for World Flight. Um, we have Flight Deck Solutions. We have Vertical Sim, Fly with Rookie, uh, Dre's Wiki Design, Latin VFR, the Heavyweight Podcast, Sim Market, and Orb X are all sponsoring World Flight uh, for us. And we'll be doing giveaways for gift card scenery. Um, the FMCs, so yeah, plenty of uh, plenty of giveaways for World Flight. Uh, yes, that's the one, Cam. The Drena 9 Alpha, yes. And then we're doing this Zulu approach for uh, the ILS. So yeah, uh, on the website also shows all the sponsors for the channel, so if you guys click on the website, you guys can also view who our sponsors are. So, yes, it's, like I said, it's going to be lots of fun, man. I can't wait. I just want to hit the fast forward button, and I want it to be World Flight already. That's, that's, that's what I want. <laughs> There's been so much, like, anticipation building up this whole year for this. So, the only sponsors that are... Not on the logo, are not on the website yet, but are sponsoring the channel is going to be Shared Flight. Shared Flight is that plugin that you saw me use with Mr. Blue Games. Um, and you'll see me use other team members like Shadow and everything on the channel. Shadow secured our sponsorship with Shared Flight, where they're going to be donating um, some keys for the Shared Flight plugin. Um, 
They're going to be giving away some keys, free keys to uh, that plugin access, which is absolutely incredible plugin. So, anyways, we are uh, looking good. So, yeah, because like I said, just joining us, please don't forget to smash down the thumbs up button and that subscribe button so you are alerted. And that notification bell, you're alerted when uh, we go live for our next stream, which will be tonight playing in Hawaii. We're going to do some Hawaiian ops. Hawaiian Ops tonight. So nice smooth flight so far. So we're looking good. We should be, let's see. See what we got here for arrival time. We got our top of descent, 245 miles top of descent. So we're looking at about 30 minutes top of drop. 30 minutes top of descent now, guys. So yeah, 30 minutes, top of the drop. We are looking good. Doo doo, doo 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 doo. Can't wait to get some lunch though. I am starving. I am starving. Starving. Should be able to hit our I-10 button and our flight attendant should be able to come bring us a hot meal. <laughs> Now, we need some flight attendants for World Flight. would like to come and serve our pilots, our wonderful and uh, dedicated pilots. Some peanuts and chips. We can go ahead and get some weather, updated weather data printed out for Accolade through our system here as well. So, I mean, in the FMCs, you can see here, you can actually do all kinds of, like, CPDLC stuff. If ATC was online, we could get digital clearance. Um, we could get all that stuff in here. ATIS, departure clearance. All that good stuff could get done out of here. Um, 
do this, which is the pre-flight, which is the initial data and stuff like that. So we can do the request. We're going to request the weather. And I'm just going to do it for, uh, let's see. Okay, so we can send that off again here. Get some updated weather. And so we'll show it on the screen here as well. We can just hit the print button. And it will also print out another copy for us. So we got our weather report that will clip right in there. So our winds are 160 at 8 knots now. Winds are changing directions a little bit. 160 at 8. Something be better now for that. So 160, nope, 222 still works as the best. It's got a nice long runway. So that works the best for us here. <clears throat> So everything there looks good. So we got an eight cars message. I think that's just the weather though. Let me see. Let's return here. So, we're going to roll, hopefully roll back our time. Tech team's working on it. Potentially make it a little bit, a little bit of daytime so I can get a little bit more visuals in here. When I first hopped in, I wasn't expecting it to go nighttime so quickly. But it did. So 
Well, hopefully nothing goes wrong here when we do this, but we're going to try to roll back in the daytime. Like I said, we are doing testing, so if something goes wrong, we'll just pick back up at an airport wherever we're next to. <laughs> we're currently just entering over the mainland of Australia now. By... By Portland or Warmabool, Campbell, Campbell, whatever that's at. We're just east of Melbourne. So, yeah, we're going to see if we can roll back to daytime here instead of the nighttime so we can actually get a little bit more visuals and you guys can see a little bit more as well at the window. Tech is working their magic remotely. Fingers crossed. Take back off. No worries. Alright, well that's what happens when you try to adjust the simulator while it's running. <laughs> uh, what I don't get is, you clearly rolled back the time to daytime, and then it's had a load again? That didn't make any sense. If it already showed the daytime, why would you need to, need to reload? Anywho. That's right. We're going to redo our flight. At the gate, not the runway.
All right, we're going to get things a little real quickly here, and we'll get out of here back to Adelaide. We're just going to go from Melbourne now. No issues. No worries. We're going to go from uh, Melbourne. So I'm going to go ahead and I'll just redo the flight plan real quick. Delta... 8317. Uh, I don't know what the code is for Melbourne. Melbourne. I Which is. is, I guess, YMLB. I don't know if that seems right or not. Uh... Alright, I need the code for Melbourne. I don't know what that is. Oh, YMML. That's right. <laughs> That's right, because we started there. So, Y, MML, to Y, pad, change this to delta, it's pounds. That's there. Generate. Yes. Okay. So we're going to get our flight plan ready to go, and we're going to get something else fixed real quick. That's why we're doing these tests, to make sure it all works right. It would be good if I had the Grinch in here with me, but he's being Grinchy. The Grinch is being Grinchy. So I'm going to go here. I'm going to reset this. We'll go here, 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 here. All right, here we go. Uh, did I disconnect? I did, but I'm going to get back in the air here shortly, Cam. We had uh, an issue we were trying to fix. We had to restart. Cover my alarm, I guess, is left, right, left, right, up, down, square button. <laughs> that is correct. You're right, Galen. That is the cheat code. <laughs> And it's raining everywhere. Uh-oh. I think the Grinch heard me. He's mad. The Grinch heard me. He is coming. Someone is at my door. Fly deck. Oh. Well, hello there, Mr. Grinch. Huh? Huh? 
they'd have to re... Yeah, I know. They but it's the key bindings are not mapped, so they'd have to restart everything if they were going to do that and unbind everything. So they're going to do it after. They're going to do it now. Or... They're going to do it after. It take like thirty minutes. Huh? So they're going to do it after because they'd have to restart everything to be able to unmap, and they have to unmap everything. Do you and need re... me or you don't? Huh? You don't need. Me. Oh no, I was just giving you crap oh, for keeping me come. Oh no, I was giving you crap keeping me company in here in the cockpit. Oh, <laughs> Mr. Grinch being Grinchy. Mr. Grinch is going. Alright, so we're going to activate. We'll execute the flight plan there. That looks good. We're going to be departing runway 16. And Nevis departure. Nevis 7. Execute. Let's get our Perf data in here, and then we'll go ahead and get things started. All right, so perf data in here, we'll load that, and 30,000 feet. So we'll select this 30,000 feet. Hopefully this works. Okay, that's good. That can come on. That fuel quantity is way too high. Um, all right, I need to do something real quick to fix this. Uh, let's see, that is not disturbing at all. <laughs> oh boy. Um, okay, so I need to do this. I need to. Restart something here real quick, guys. Uh, 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 uh. Okay, had to restart. The pro sim software real quick. That's good. It's not disturbing at all. <laughs> you guys didn't like seeing the Grinch? Uh, ground power. There we go. Bam. Now it's only seen the one FMC. Isn't it? It's going to do me dirty like that. Um, I don't know if it's in both, so now I just need to go in there and fix the screen. So I can do this, just like that, and then I need to open this, so I can then go in here. Desktop and Captain CEO. It's frozen. It's reading it though. That's weird. That is so weird. All right. Anyways, uh, you put this in here. Long time for that. Um, okay, so let's get this thing flying. Put the route back in here, just like that. So, appreciate you guys hanging out with us here in the... while we're doing all of our testing. And activate that. We said we're doing runway 16 on the Nevis. So, we'll execute that. Go to perf data, I'm gonna request that. Okay. We're gonna 
reconnect on VATSAM. I'm going to refile the flight plan because it's a new flight plan now. Let me disconnect. There we go. Now it's filed. Connecting. Cool. And we'll go like that. Like that. Cool. And it's weird that it's not doing that, but anyways. We'll load that in. That looks good. Three thousand feet. Cool. Looks cute. And we're just going to go full send toga. Flaps five. Get our center of gravity. It's going to be 22.3. So 22.3. And V speeds 136, 138.147. 147's coming in there. Just like so. That's all good. We're going to go up to 30,000 feet. 30,000 feet, LNAV can go on, all of rig RTO, that should be like that. Transponder is just on transponding, and that's all good. We'll get on Unicom, 122.8. That's good. That's good, that's good. Fire up the APU. All right, so let's get over to our thing here. Altimeter. Altimeter is going to be 10, 12. That's good. Switch that over, 12. That's good. APU's firing up. That's going to be on the bus here in just a moment, and then we'll be ready for push and start. All right, so timber's in, that looks good. We're gonna go to our charts, because we're just about ready for pushback here. All right, APU bus is coming on. Isolation valve is open, hydraulics are gonna come on. Fuel pumps are on. I'm um, looking, hold on. Uh, yep, yeah, good. Good. Good, good, good. Alright, so let's get a screen up on here. That's good. Get this on this page here. Let me bring that. Bring that over to there. Execute. Okay, so that's all working. That's on. Beacon lights coming on. And we're ready for push. We are ready for push and start. Let's do it. So we can catch up to those guys. Go into Attic Lane. 
Pirates are definitely going to get there before us now, but that's all right. So I'm good, I'm good. So, so before we push back right now, Flight Tent's going to come in and bring me a water before we start moving. We're going to get ground power off as we are on APU power. And then we're going to be ready to push. So in just a moment. Yeah. Oh, thank you. That was a little weird, but thank you. Oh, hold on. Oh, thank you. All right, magically we got water. Cool. We have water. Very good for push. Uh, let me bring in my charts. I think we got to push straight back here. It looks like there's something next to me, so I don't think I can push one direction. Um, airport, church, where are we at? Parking-wise. Oh, that's weird. I don't know where we're at. Okay, we're at the maintenance shed. <laughs> well, he put us at the gate, but he put us at the maintenance shed. That's alright. We got a long taxi. Um, uh, yeah, so we're not pushing back at all. We're just going to go straight forward. So let's fire up the engines here. We're... All right, like I said, at the maintenance shed. So packs are coming off, and number one, number two, over to ground. Oh, maybe you bleeds gonna come on now. That would help. Introduce fuel. So yeah, we're actually going to just go straight out to the right here. So I guess it makes sense we're at the maintenance hangar because we had to perform some maintenance. Kenny, that's a big loss, man. What's going on? Where's the luck? You left all your luck at Scott's house. Alright, starters cut out. Waiting for engine number one to stabilize. Put that right here for now. All right, number one's good. Start uh, number or number two's good. Start number one. Waiting for twenty-five and two, and introducing fuel. All right, fuel is going. Fuel's loading. I guess we should have tested our fire warning before. All right, let's get flaps five set as well. Yep, 
Damn, that's two in a row, two in a row Kenny. Two in a row. All right, starters cut out. Good ending start on one. Jen's on. Pack is on. Isolation valve to auto. APU bleeds off. APU's off. Taxi lights on. Parking brakes released. Let's get on out of here. Well, let's see what happened here. There we go. Fix the view. Mr. Nolan, what's going on? Good to see you, Nolan. Welcome aboard. Good to see you. We were in the middle of a fight on to Alkalade from uh, Hobart, but uh, we had to stop the sim and fix something. So now we're going to take back off from Melbourne and continue our last flight to Alkalade. The other guys that we were flying with, we were flying with Ken and stuff. I'm sure he's going to get their way before us now at this point. But... We'll catch up as fast as we can. I don't know what just happened to the screen. Do, 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 do. All right, another slight technical difficulty. Maybe we'll get this fixed here. Let me try something here. Uh, you just hit your top of descent. Okay, uh, all the uh, all the ways behind you. Alright, we're gonna try something here because there's only one way I know how to get the screen back. Make 
Short delay. So, Tui, what's going on, man? Welcome. Good to see you back. Uh, did the Matrix break? Uh, yes. The Grinch and uh, it came in and broke. So it's not a wall, it's just a screen. Alright, I'm going to try something. Hopefully this will not crash it. I'm going to line us up on... Runway 16. And this should fix the screen, hopefully. Okay, may not fix. We're going to attempt to fix the screen. Alright, we're trying something here. Bear with me. Yeah, 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 yeah. All right. Let's try this here. <laughs> uh, yes, bear is bear in the cockpit is a challenge for sure.
All right, we're gonna restart the engines. We're on the runway. Everything else is good to go. Ah, oh, fuck me. Well, this is why we do these test flights. Alright, let's try this again. Okay. Delta Tango, what's going on? Uh, did you see what Jeff Rob and other YouTubers and real pilots are all of you renting this for videos? I'm confused. No, this is, we're all part of a team. We're all part of a team, and this is part of our world flight. We're going to be flying an event in person. Everyone will be here in person in less than two weeks. The first weekend of November, we go live for world flight. Um, and everyone's on the team. Jeff's on the team. I'm on the team. Rookie, Shadow, Sheer Insane, Blue Games, um, and many other pilots are on the team. And we're going to fly for a week straight in this thing all the way around the world for charity. That's... Uh, Applying for a week straight for charity. That's uh, everything that we'll be doing. So, Delta Tango. Execute. Yeah, flaps five. 22.3. Cool. 30,000. I'm just going to re put all this stuff in here real quick. It's all on, 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 on. Maybe you jump on, if you believe it's on. I don't have the Come on. I'll do this again. Okay. All 
So yes, but yeah, everyone's part of World Flight, so gonna be fun, fun, fun. Uh, okay, so that's in there. That looks good. All right, starting at number one. All right, we are going to get this flight in. As soon as engine 2 is good and fired up, we will be getting the hell out of here very quickly. Thirteen to thirteen. All right, all throttles coming on. Engine start. Switches to continuous generators on. Pack is on. Uh huh. Boom. All right, let's get out of here. Let's do it. Hell nav is on. There we go. Engine's at forty percent. And Togo. Oh, why that's saying. Pick up him, pig. Whoa, the hell? Just happened. Pick up him, pig. Oh, that's what happened. All right, oh, we got this. And rotate. Slow terrain. Slow terrain. All right, and gears coming up. So, I don't know why he's giving us a takeoff config warning because it was obviously not an issue. Flaps are coming up. Here's off. Uh, it's probably because the transponder was not DRA.
All right. We're climbing, and we're on the way finally. All right, well, we're climbing through the clouds now, transition altitude. All right, we're looking good. This approach is going to be challenging with the uh, slight mechanical maintenance issues that we're going to experience here on the approach, but we will somehow land safely. So we are off to the races. I uh, can't see anything on my pad visibility is down to 500 feet. Oh, great. <laughs> I guess we're going to do an auto landing then. We'll do a CAD 3 approach into uh, Adelaide. CAD 3 approach it is. We should have been in Adelaide already, but that's all right. All right. The visibility didn't look too bad with a cap on the ground, so I don't know. But we'll see when we get there, I guess, what the visibility is like. Uh, let's do our arrival. We're still going to plan for yeah, Zulu. Put up my map here and step through this, see how it looks. Looks good. All right, we're all set. We are all set. So this should not be a very long flight.
Time. See, Cam, appreciate the, the overlay stuff, too. I'm going to give it to you, too, on it if we have to tweak it at all. I might need you to add the World Flight logo on top instead of Delta, but keep it the Delta colors, but I'll, uh, I'll let you know, man. Appreciate it. Appreciate you flying along. Sorry we had to restart. But I do appreciate your continued support of the channel, my friend. Hopefully you have a good rest of the day. Hopefully we'll see you tonight, too, when we're flying in Hawaii. Hawaii? We will be flying in Hawaii, uh, Hawaii Island flying later this evening for Southwest. All right, let's see both signs coming off. All right, we are doing good. So once we get to our cruise here, I am going to step out for just a moment, though. I need to use the restroom. So give me just a couple minutes. We're reaching our cruising altitude now of 30,000 feet. Seatbelt sign has been off. And I'm going to use the restroom, and I will be right back in just a minute, guys.
All right, I'm back. Uh, Captain Ray, what's going on? Said, wait for a second, looks like the bear got him. <laughs> no, the bear did not get me. He spat me back out. So, yes, now the bear spat me back out. We're back in here. Oops. Yeah, the bear did not... Uh, I, mean, I won the I won the fight, no worries. <laughs> we are alive and well. All right. So we're just over 80 miles from our top of descent. We are exactly 88 miles top of descent now into uh, into Accolade. So we should be on the ground in about 30 minutes or so, roughly. Uh, let's see. Got to admit, the C-17 Global Master is the true butter machine. <laughs> Aviation boss, what's going on? Um, is this in real life or in the sim? I've seen some good uh, uh, over by March Air Force Base, kind of where I live. Um, I always see them get to practice. Uh, they're doing their circuits in the C-17 or the KC-135s. and I have seen some pretty greasy landings, but I've also seen some pretty good smashers. <laughs> seen some good smashers, but some really good greasers as well. So I guess it just depends on who's flying the aircraft. But, uh, but yeah, they fly right, right over my house all the time. There's a good spot you can kind of kind of watch and see. I mean, if you uh, look at the videos on my channel, I actually have uh, a little bit, a little short video of some C-17 landings. Um, it's got some C-17s in it, and there's also a Reaper drone um, as the landing uh, at, at the end of the video, I believe, because they fly drones out of March Air Force Base, too. A little Reaper drone, I think, Reaper surveillance drone. So, um, next, was it next Sunday? Next Sunday. Not next Sunday. Next Saturday. So next Saturday, everybody said we're going down to San Diego. We're going to be flying in another World Teams, uh, another World Flight Team member's full cockpit simulator with him this time. So we'll have someone flying with us. Um, he's invited us down to check out his simulator before World Flight the following week. Um, so we should be flying with him uh, next Saturday afternoon. Saturday morning... Before we go to his house, I think we're going to do some early morning plane spotting out of San Diego uh, International Airport. So probably that's going to probably be about 6 a.m. We'll 6 7 a.m. We'll do some plane spotting before we head to his house down in San Diego, and uh, so that would be cool. And then, uh, like I said, tonight doing some Hawaii flying tonight. Once we get back to our house in the normal sim, we'll do some Hawaii flights tonight. So yeah, no, it's gonna be a lot of fun. Cannot wait for world flight. We are what, ten days away? Feels like ten days away. Something like that. Ten, twelve days away. Uh, uh, you get a lot of good international flight uh, from Pacific. Yes, that you do.
All right, so we're near the top of descent here. Let's go and plug in our, we'll get our approach information in here. Um, we'll look up our approach charts. So we're coming in on the uh, at arrival, and we're doing an ILS 23 Zulu. That's the airport chart. So, so we're coming up on the Drina 9 Alpha arrival. Um, that I think you can see from the, you'll see from the charts when it gets put on the screen. Um, yeah, we're coming on the Drina 9 Alpha arrival, transitioning into Gully, which will be for our Arnev 23, Arnev Zulu, or not Arnev, ILS Zulu approach for runway 23, which we need to go down to 3,800 feet. So we're going to reset this down to 3,800 feet here. So 3,800 feet is in, and that is good. Um, and then we're going to put in our course heading. It's going to be 222 for our course. Two twenty two there. We'll put two twenty two in this one. And then our let's just fix this to match our current heading here. Um, and then our ILS frequency is going to be one oh nine seven. We'll put that down here in our ILS box one oh nine seven. And we'll enter that. Same on this side. One oh nine seven. All right, so our ILS frequencies, of course, that's all programmed and ready to go for our approach. Uh, from San Diego, uh, they get some international flights in San Diego. I know um, there is some international flights. I wouldn't say there's as many as, like, LAX or something like that. I think most of them from the Pacific go into L.A. Uh, but San Diego does get some. They get some 330s. They get some 350s in there. Um, they get a 777 every so often, too. Uh, I mean, you can land up to a 747 into yeah, you can land up a uh, up to a 747 in San Diego if you really wanted to. They used to. I think British Airways actually uh, does still take a 74 into San Diego every so often. I think so. I remember someone telling me that. Okay, so. I'll show you the chart here one more time real quick too. This is what we got set up for the ILS approach now that we got the chart up on the screen. So this is our course. We got final course as tw uh, 222, 109 you see here on the localizer for 109, 109.7. Uh, it's pretty much straight in approach. We're coming in though from the south and down here in this arrival to Gully and then we'll make a left turn for final as you can see there. Um, capture the glide slope here at uh, Mopri at 3,800 feet for a nice glide path in. We'll get our minimums in. Minimums you can see down here on the ILS. The highlighted 270 is going to be our barrel. So let's put in 270 here. Oops. Let's put in 270. All right, so 270 is in. That's looking good. Uh, Jordan, let's go. How much can you eat for dinner? I don't know. I'm, I'm really, I'm really craving Subway. I'm not gonna. Lie. <laughs> I'm really craving Subway, Jordan. What are you gonna have? Yeah, I'm not gonna lie. I'm craving some Subway. Um, so yeah, but that's our approach chart there for our runway. Nice long 10,000 foot runway. We're gonna do auto brakes three for this landing. Nice runway. Hopefully we can exit the runway um, by Foxtrot 4 right here. That's our goal. We want to exit no later than Foxtrot 4 so we don't have too long of a taxi this way. Um, from Foxtrot 4 to Foxtrot 3, Foxtrot 2, right on Alpha 5 to Alpha 6, and then Kilo into the ramp. 
So that's that's really what we're what we're shooting for on the approach here. Uh, myself, man, probably going to get some Subway now that you mention it. Uh, it's been a while for me. Uh, yep, see, can't go wrong with Subway. You can't go wrong with a nice sandwich. I think I've been doing Subway so much, to be honest, that because it's been summertime and it's been so hot, like, eating hot food is just not... Eating hot food is not as enjoyable, if that makes sense. You know what I mean? Like, a nice, cold, nice, cold, delicious sandwich it just seems so much more enticing in the summertime. We need to send Davy Jones to Davy Jones Lock. <laughs> Good luck with that. Make myself a Philly cheesesteak with nacho cheese. Ooh. Ooh. With nacho cheese. Oh, hello. Uh, no, that sounds really good, not going to lie. Uh, I've not even thought about trying that with nacho cheese. I think I would put, like, pepper jack cheese melted on there and nacho cheese. Spice it up a little bit. Might have to give that a try here soon. Provolone is good, yeah. Provolone is good. I'm just a sucker for spicy jack. I like my spicy cheese. I like it a little bit spicy, but I just love cheese in general, too. Cheese is bad, but I love cheese. The speed is bouncing. Is that normal? Yeah, we're hitting a little bit of turbulence right now. We got a 59 knot crosswind. So, yeah, that's normal, 7.3, because we're just bouncing around a little bit up here. Uh, let's say 59, 60 knot crosswind. If you look on the uh, the map screen there, it's got a wind at 020 at 60 knots right now. Those are so good. So, yeah, I, I love cheese, but I don't love old cheese. So what I mean by old cheese is I had the privilege of going to Wisconsin, Milwaukee, Wisconsin, about, uh, I don't know, 11 years now, eleven years ago now. And uh, so, you know, Wisconsin is, is the cheese state, right? Well, apparently they sell cheese by different years aged. And there was cheese as old as 110-year-old cheese that I saw there in that store. I tried 50-year-old cheese and uh, was not for me. Like, it was super, super sharp. <laughs> apparently people love that shit, but 50-year-old uh, cheese, not for me. I'll stick with the regular cheese. I'm going to get David Jones hooked on Subway. <laughs> there you go. You're actually craving cheese right now? I'm always craving cheese. I'm always just craving food. That's my problem. That's my problem. I stopped doing the physical jobs and uh, got the office, sit down, or trucking job, and didn't cut down on the eating. So, but we're about ready to start our descent here. We're going to get our seatbelt sign back on. I don't know if it's just turned on here or not. Testing, testing. So, ladies and gentlemen, please return to your seats and fasten your seatbelt sign. Cap has turned on the fasten seatbelt sign today. We're going to do uh, start our descent now down into Adelaide. Appreciate your uh, patience and understanding on this uh, maintenance flight here into Adelaide. Hope you enjoyed flying here at Delta A317. Uh, Ash, uh, are you using the Telex headset? Uh, I'm not sure what headset we're using, to be honest. Yes, this is the Telex headset, yes. That is correct. Good eye. Good eye, good eye. To be honest, you should, uh, uh, to be honest, you would suit being a pilot. I appreciate it. Throttles again, yeah. Now the throttles are off sync. That's just like I said, we're gonna have to program that. We can't program while we're streaming. Um, it's a programming and coding issue that we're working on. It's also kind of a bug with ProSim at the moment, uh, which is the software used for the plane. So just like any other simulator, there's bugs um, and stuff like that. So I've been told that these are the Telex Airman 750 headsets. So for the full uh, Full description of what they are, the Telex, Telex Airman 750 headsets is what we are using in the cockpit. And they plug in just at the top here, just like they would in um, 
in a real Boeing plane. They plug right up in the top of both sides for the pilots. So yeah, you could use real official air, you know, Bose Airman pilots in here, or air headsets in here if you wanted to as well. Um, those are just super expensive. All right, here we go. Officially started our descent. We are descending, ladies and gentlemen. Speed brakes are coming out. Help with that descent. This is the final flight of our streams for today until tonight when we stream in Hawaii. So I'm going to do a little bit more testing after this flight um, as we're going to fix some things after this stuff that we've seen that we need uh, to work on. And then uh, we'll, be heading, uh, we'll be heading home to, uh, well, to go home today because we got work tomorrow to get ready for as well as to do our normal stream from home. It is Suggestion Sunday, so we're using someone's suggested flights. I think it was Cow Flipper in Discord suggested to do some Hawaiian Island hops for Southwest. So we'll be doing that tonight. Is this Maverick Simulator? <laughs> I wish. No. Uh, I always find people who do flight sims always work twice as hard and have to remember twice as much. Uh, then you share cockpit and it all goes so quick. Um, well, here's the thing about doing shared cockpit like in something like this. It's a totally different flying experience. Right? It's a totally different flying experience because when we're doing this at home, we're used to doing everything ourselves, right? We do the landing gear, we do all the lights, we do all the controls, all the switches. But when you're flying with someone else, you have to actually get used to them helping you and not fighting over the controls, right? <clears throat> so it definitely takes some getting used to. It's definitely a, good, a bad, different flight experience, but it's, it's weird. But I think it's a more enjoyable flight experience. It does go by a little bit quicker, the setup and stuff. But I think it's <clears throat> a lot more fun to fly with someone. You know what I mean? A lot more fun to fly with uh, with a partner, which you guys will see in not next weekend, but the weekend after World Flight starts. Make sure you guys are here for World Flight Week starting November 4th. And we will be flying in the cockpit all the time with another partner. Um, and potentially someone sitting in the jump seat as well. We do have a real working jump seat in this aircraft. So there'll be three of us in here for most of every flight. So yeah, this is sim uh, Fly with Rookie Simulator, Captain Ray. This is Fly with Rookie. <coughs> We're part of uh, this, the World Flight Team. Usually when I do, uh, we just decide who lands and who takes off, and then the leg back, we just switch. I mean, that's how it usually works. Like I said, we'll be switching back and forth, so I mean... Uh, I mean, in this, in this simulator, you can fly, uh, for the most part, from both sides of the cockpit. The only challenge is, is in cockpits like this, when you're using screens and projectors, the view is only going to be straight for one pilot. So we have the view set up straight for the left seat, because that's the captain's seat. So when we fly left flight, the person sitting in the left seat is going to be always the pilot flying. Now, with Microsoft, when we switch to Microsoft uh, after World Flight, because moving forward, this sim will be run off a of Microsoft Flight Simulator. There's actually a way that we were able to fix it that way, so where we could press a button in the cockpit, and it would switch the view back and forth between the left seat and right seat and center. So we will be able to fly continuously from both seats here after World Flight when we switch to Microsoft, which is pretty cool. From what I saw in the industry, we were probably one of the first ones to actually figure out how to get the view easily switched between both seats because that's always everyone's biggest challenge is getting the view straight for the pilot. Because it's only straight for one seat at a time. You can't have it straight on both sides at the same time. You have to switch back and forth. Uh, let's see. The whole time I'll be waiting for Leslie Nelson to come into the cabin and say, good luck, we're all counting on you. <laughs> Anthony, what's going on? Hello, welcome aboard. Good to see you. Isn't there a problem with all sims where it looks like you're flying sideways? It's in the full sim. I was in yesterday, I think, in the sim. Yes. So it is. So right now, the view is straight for me. So for the way you guys are looking at the view, because you're not seated where I'm at and the camera is off at an angle, it's going to look a little bit skewed from your guys' viewpoint. But it's straight from where I'm sitting right here. So it's straight from where I'm sitting. 
if you're sitting in the right seat, it will look really, really crooked. Um, and that's the problem with every sim. Like I said, you can only have it straight for one seat at any given time. However, at Microsoft, we can push a button here on the yoke. Behind the yoke, there's a button. And we can push that button, and it will switch between my view. And then they can push a button on their yoke, and it will switch the view over to their view. Same way you do at Microsoft, like how you do, uh, how you would change your wing views and stuff like that. We can set up a view similar to where it's straight for me, and then he pushes a button, it's straight for him. So then in theory, we could do it to where I take off, he switches the view, and he can land the plane without us having to switch seats. Or just I fly the whole lake like they would in real life. And then once we get on the ground, instead of switching seats, we just switch the views, and he can fly the next lake. Which is really cool. I thought you were crabbing last time. Um, yeah, it's going to look like it from your guys' point of view because you guys are at an angle and you're not seated right behind me. That's why it's going to look crooked because it's only going to look crooked if you were looking at it through my exact view. Um, it's only, the only way it's going to look perfectly straight. So for me, it looks straight. You guys in the back from that camera facing the front of the sim, it will not be perfectly straight just because of that reason. Uh, yes, the yokes are not linked. Um, so yeah, the yokes are not linked. Rookie does plan on getting them linked uh, once he moves the simulator into its new location. He'll be getting a, new, a building to put this in, where he's going to be rent, excuse me renting out flights. And once it gets moved, then it, it, the link yokes will get linked up, but they're not linked currently. Been lurking a long time. This is good stuff. Keith B, appreciate you, man. I appreciate you lurking in here and staying with us. I appreciate all of you guys that have stayed with us through all the, uh, you know, trial and errors. As we're, like I said, we're fine-tuning. We're about 90-ish percent com fully complete and ready to go for World Flight. Just some few minor things like the uneven throttles. Like in the sim, the quantities are correct, but it's outside the sim that they're, they're disconnected. So... Uh, yeah, so just my very minor things, stream audio, stream visuals. Um, so the bottom right of the screen where you guys kind of see a mixture of like the MCP panel and stuff, that is going to be eventually like a wing view out of the aircraft as well as switching between the wing view and the front of the view. So you could see like out the window like what I'm looking at. Um, that is going to get added on there. That's one of the things that we're working on. That's one of the last few things for the stream setup we need to get fully ready. Uh, but yeah, so you guys will get wing views and stuff like that while we're flying in here for World Flight. Anthony, how are you doing today? I'm doing well. How are you doing? I'm doing well. Can't complain. Can't complain. We're doing pretty well. We are doing well. We're getting ready to land finally in Accolade here. So once we get to the gate, I will not be able to, unfortunately, shut off the engines because of something that we did before this flight that we need to fix. Um, but we'll be able to pull up to the gate, we'll get our AP running and everything, and we'll get everything else shut down. We just can't fully shut down the engines, unfortunately, um, to end the stream, but, uh, but yeah. So, uh, we were trying real quickly to fix our VATSIM map button, because we're not on VATSIM at the moment, since we were delayed and restarted, so we're not on VATSIM at the moment, but we were trying to fix our VATSIM button, so... On the dashboard here of the plane, there's an actual mic button in the real plane where you would push, and that's how you, you talk to ATC. Um, I believe in the real plane, they also have the option of doing it on the yoke as well, but we have it mapped to the old school mic button. Um, where did that view come from? Um, yeah, so we have it to the old school, uh, mic button, but, uh, all right, so we're below 18,000 feet, too. We're going to get landing lights and stuff back on here, wing lights back on. We're going to ding the cabin real quick, let them know we're getting close. As we are getting close to the window shades work, I know it's a stupid detail, um, <laughs> no, I mean, they might work, they might work in the future. Um, he does have the stuff here to do window shades, but the window shades are not installed currently, no. 
Uh, I'm on a flight right now. I had to waste a lot of fuel waiting for aircraft to land and headed from Gatwick to Salzburg. Uh, yeah, on the yellow cliff side at the back, there's a switch for the mic. Yes, yes, yes. Yeah, both of them have switches on the back. So they can do it from there. They can push it from the top here. Um, you got options. All right, so let me get my landing altitude in here for this approach because I don't think we put that in. Landing altitude, 20 feet. 50 feet on there, that looks good. We're gonna land flap 30 here. Okay, we're looking good there. So far, so good. I was told that there was low visibility in here, um, in which I can actually reprint our weather real quick here. So if we go here, we go to AOC, we go to request, we can request the weather for Yankee, Papa, Alpha, Delta. Did I go in? Why did I not go in? Hold on. Yankee, Papa, Alpha, Delta. Okay, why did it go in? Why is it not going in? Let's see here. There it is. All right, so I'm sending that off. You can see on our screen there. So we send that off, wait for our ding, and then we can view the weather on the screen. We can also print out the weather, and it'll print right here at our printer on the pedestal. And so we have our weather update. Wind right now is 190 at 5 knots. Visibility is not showing on here. All right, so visibility is low. QNH is 107. Let's get that on both sides. Seven. So we're gonna get ready to switch to standard pressure here. Let's get this back on the lake page. Well, I can just clip that here. Uh, can you press the evacuation switch? <laughs> uh, no. Uh, Pluto is going. How much uh, does this cost per hour? So. I'm not sure. You're gonna to have to ask Fly with Rookie. Fly with Rookie is the one that would rent this out. Um, I'm not paying per hour. This is part of our team's simulator, part of SoCal Crew's team. So I don't have to luckily pay to use it because I'm a part of the team. Um, but, yeah, if you wanted to come by and you're in Southern California and you want to come by and fly the sim, Rookie does graciously rent it out and uh, would be more than happy to rent it out to you. There's no ADIS in Salzburg. Nothing for you. I'm not going to Salzburg. I'm going to Adelaide. Uh, so you have a stream tonight, Captain Ray? Yes, we will be streaming tonight. We're going to be doing some Hawaiian Island Ops in Southwest, 737-700. Hawaii Island Ops. Yes, yeah, Subway Eat Fresh is the overlay crew. It's spelled crew. I don't know if that's wrong. <laughs> yes, no, that is wrong. It will be fixed. Don't worry. Like I said, these are all test stuff. Someone pointed that out earlier. We just haven't bothered to fix it yet. But yes, no, that will say we have actually a whole new custom overlay that will be put in. This is just like a default overlay uh, that comes with the program we use for the overlay. But we have a custom overlay we'll be installing that's courtesy from Short Final. Mr. Cam and chat. Make sure to get a lot of foot long for the flight ma meal. Yes. We got to make sure that. We're going to go ahead and get our speed down here as well. Speed brakes are coming out. It is raining. So, yeah, if you guys join Fly with Rookies Discord channel, you can uh, view the flights. Uh, on his Discord channel, book your real-life flight. Um, 
I guess I could look real quick. Well, I got a second here before we land. I'm going to go ahead and go flaps five now, too. Uh, So yeah, if you join Fly of the Rookies Discord, though, it's all on there. But yes, now if I had my Airbus, if we were in Airbus right now, Bob alert! What bot? Don't see a bot. Anyways, all right, so we're looking good here. We're coming in good. We're starting to break through the clouds here, so we should have some decent visibility. Uh, what size are the monitors? We use a full wraparound projection screen, Captain Ray. Yeah, full wraparound projection. So there's three projectors that are making this image, um, which those are one of the few things we just have to finish tweaking to to make it seamless. Uh, but they're pretty damn close to seamless right now. Uh, well, there's just a few minor adjustments we got to do. But yeah, no, that's full wraparound, 220 degree field of view projection screen. All right, we're looking good here. I'm gonna go down to one. Go down to 190. 190 here, flaps 10. We're going to arm our localizer. Uh, screen info is there as well, yes. So, yeah, join uh, that link there, Mr. Rookie, the man, the myth, the legend himself. Our localizer has been captured. Approach mode is on. Glide slope has been activated. So, glide slope captured. We're looking good. We have the runway in sight. We got a little bit of a crosswind going on right now, about 16 knots. Yeah, go for it, Satui man. Bring the whole crew. Bring the whole crew. We'll have a good old time. All right, so we're looking good here. We're 10 miles out. I'm going to go gear down. We're going to go 180, and we're going to go flaps 15. And we've been cleared for our arrival as well. Taxi lights coming on. Engine start switches over to continuous. Being the cabin, let them know we are cleared for our arrival. So very crabby right now coming in here. Uh, Seabelt Sign at Custom Edition. So the Seabelt Sign comes with a sim, but Rookie actually has in the galley a lighted up seatbelt sign that goes on and off with the switch um, in our galley section where people can sit past passengers. Eventually the goal is to have like actual windows and put like wing views in the galley. People sit there and they can actually look out the window like they are flying a real in a real plane. Um, that's the goal once the thing gets moved is, uh, from what Rookie's been telling me. All right, there we go. Final approach speed. If 
Pops 25 coming out. Let's see how smooth of a landing we can get. We got a minus, what did we got in the first one, guys? A minus 107? I don't know if we can beat it, but we're going to try. Minus 107 on the first landing. Flap 30 is coming out. Well, believe me, Cam, if Rookie could do it, he'd do it. He'd do that in a RB. All right, my throttles, my airplane. I'll see you guys on the ground. So we'll see how smooth we get here because we can't really use the trim or else it's going to change the view on us. <laughs> Which is one of the things that we got to remap after this flight. So we are on glide pass so far. We're looking good. Coming in a little crabbed. That's all right. A little crabby. A little crabby crab. Get her down. We're starting to get a little high. Approaching minimums. Minimums. Continue. We're looking good. We're looking good. Come on, get down. Get down. There we go, reversers are out. Nose down gently. You guys are going to have to tell me what the landing rate was. I can't see it from my view. 80 knots. Manual braking. Still on the reversers. <coughs> Welcome to Adelaide. This is default scenery. Don't pay for this, but so the scenery won't be the best. But we're here. We made it. We're in a taxi here. Take the runway to the right, which is right where we wanted. Foxtrot four. Foxtrot four. Foxtrot four. We'll taxi back towards the. Uh, taxi back towards the uh, terminal here. Landing lights are coming off, turn offs, APU can come on, and it starts switches off, that's off, boom, spoilers are down, we can bring our flaps up. Welcome to Adelaide. Nice landing, nice. What did it say I got? I got multiple people saying multiple things in here. What was my landing rate? All right, so we're going to cross runway 30. The terminal building's right over there to the right. Uh, let's see. What can be done if you're flying A320 with the setup? Uh, well, you can't really fly an A320 with a setup, but you can purchase an A320 full cockpit simulator from Flight Up Solutions. So you can definitely purchase. 
Uh, but yeah, you can't really uh, fly an E320 with this. I mean, you could, but it wouldn't be very immersive because it's all the wrong switches. I mean, you could technically fly. You could technically fly any plane with this, I guess. Technically. All right, let's just get over to the gate here. Uh, you should purchase the 320 sim and do a giveaway. <laughs> Gonna do a giveaway of the 320 sim. <laughs> so we're already giving away uh, two uh, FMCs on uh, World Flight Day. You guys can pick whether you want a Boeing or an Airbus FMC from Flight Deck Solutions. They're worth like 1,600 bucks a piece. We are raffling them off during World Flight. Two of them. So you could win yourself at least a piece of a sim. The, very, the start of your very own sim and gradually get the pieces one by one instead of buying it all at once because you buy it all at once man you're going to be spending a ton of money <laughs> so like I said this is a default so don't judge the airport this isn't the pay where one that will be flying to in world flight So we're going to go ahead and we'll take the gate here to the left. Taxi lights coming off. Getting the bus on. And there we go. And stop. Parking brake is on. We have made it, guys. We have made it here into Adelaide. Of course, I'm going to ask about, uh, about kickers. Yeah, there are butt kickers. Yep, going to be some butt kicks, butt kickers being given away. Uh, do you pay shipping? No, I don't believe so. I believe Flight Deck Solutions is going to be shipping it to him direct. Rookie can answer that more than I could. Um, but I'd want to say no. I just don't know for sure. Those details, though, will be for sure once we're on World Flight and announce it. Ghost Rider, what's going on? Welcome, welcome. Good to see you guys. Good to see all of you here in uh, in chat. I appreciate you guys joining along with us today. Oh, we got the front camera. I uh, appreciate all of you guys joining along with us today on our test stream. Uh, still some improvements to go before World Flight. Uh, an A380. So there are 747 simulators, Drax, that are going to be in World Flight. There's two teams that have 747 simulators. There's one team that has an A320, and one team that has an A330, and then the rest, I think, are 73s. Um, yes, FTS will cover everything to make sure it gets to the winner, yes. So yeah, you should not pay for shipping for any of the giveaways. Um, everything should be included. So there are going to be giveaways, and then there are going to be raffles. I just want to make sure that's distinguished on there, too. The top prizes, uh, for example, like the flight directors, because what we're doing for World Flight, this whole event is for charity, guys. We're raising money for Orbis for flying this whole week. Everything that gets donated is going straight to charity 100%. Nothing comes to us. It all goes straight to the charity. Uh, my SimFest guy still using a 7.4? Yes. SimFest says 2 is still using. They're one of the ones that have a 7.4. And the main Australia team has a 7-4. Uh, but yeah, this, this main thing is for charity. So, Jesus. What was that? I don't know what the hell that was. Something fell. Um, so yeah, this is, uh, like I said, it's all for charity. So the bigger prizes are going to be a raffle, which means it just requires a, a minimum donation of at least just $5 to be entered into the raffle. Um, and at that point... Uh, at that point, uh, you know, everyone that donates a minimum $5 during the, the raffle will be entered in to win to it. 
And then other prizes will be straight giveaways like you guys normally see on our channel, uh, where you just have to be present to win in the channel. So, uh, William, hey, I know that's like the main question everyone asks. I didn't spend anything for this. It's not my simulator. Oops. It is uh, Fly with Rookie Simulator. I don't know if he'll answer that question or not, but uh, you're the wrong person. <laughs> uh there's like nights you see in, in europe right now well it's getting kind of late in europe isn't it isn't it uh like 10 o'clock in europe or so on a sunday 10 o'clock london time in europe i think they're eight hours ahead of us so that kind of explains it but uh but yeah so i hope you guys enjoyed it we will be live later tonight um probably around six ish about six tonight or so six seven o'clock our usual time uh at night anyways um and we're going to be streaming in uh hawaii uh, can you smoke in the cockpit? No. <laughs> no smoking in the cockpit. Daps only. Yeah, there you go. But, um, yeah, so, yeah, I hope you guys enjoyed hanging out with us. I appreciate you hanging out with us and helping us test our stream, test our audio, giving us feedback. It's very much appreciated, so we can be ready to go here. Um, this is only the first of many, many more streams to come from the full flight deck um, as things are becoming fully operational. Um, we'll be doing more streams even after World Flight. World Flight's not the only event we're going to be doing in here. We'll do events uh, probably at least once a month in here um, until we break it down to move it to its own location. And then when it's all put back up, again, uh, events at least once a month with the team. So, so yes, I appreciate each and every one of you guys. I'm sick, and I'm excited to see you in a few weeks. Yes, to two weeks, less than two weeks, less than two weeks, November 4th. We go live 3 a.m., I believe, is uh, my first flight out of... Ontario to Honolulu, 3 a.m. on Friday, November 4th. Um, and Fly with Rookie will be my... Be, I'll be his co-pilot that flight. Fly with Rookie will be the captain on that flight. So, yeah, super excited, guys. Cannot wait. Appreciate you. Until later tonight, Maverick is out. And I will see you guys on the next one. So, Maverick's out. See you.